Is it right? I mean. Okay, so it's, is that going? Shh. Yeah. Thanks. It's 302. We'll commence the meeting. A quorum is present. The meeting has been due to constitute a call to order and ask for an approval of the agenda. Is that a motion? Uh, we don't move in second here, right? It's it's on the nod. You you could you can still move in second. The procedures still apply. It's just the decisions are only recommendations. Only recommendations, so yes. no resolutions. Fine. So I'll take a movement. A move. Do you do it in reverse and go opposed? What? It's up to you. I mean, I as you know, I, there's a reason for doing things by the book uh, in in a public environment. But on the other hand, this is. I'm quite happy to do it on the nod, but let's um, let's keep it fast. You know, there's this litany that uh, we see at Metro and the thing, and it's the guy says, "All of you, little bit, little bit." Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's what's the point? Let's go. Any change to the agenda? Okay, so uh, I'll take uh, all in favour and opposed. Seeing none, that carries. So first order of business is public participation. Seeing, you sure? One thing, huh? I am thrilled to see that the um, dip off near our, on the roadway, on the sidewalk near our house has been um, worked on and Fixed. completed much more safe. Oh, you're lucky. Your kids going to school are lucky. Mm. Thank you. I didn't even know about it. I thought we were going to see one in the ditch pretty soon. Mm -hmm. It was a really bad dip and Fred almost took a header into the ditch with it one time. Yikes. Needed to be dead. The flashlight wasn't very bright that night. Got it. <clears throat> Thank you. We will move on to adoption of the minutes of September 15th, last meeting, in fact. Um, any changes, adds, additions, deletions, extractions? I have no changes. Um, I have. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, question. I was looking at the previous um, what's this? agenda. No, is this agenda for the previous meeting? And it seems like some of the points I'm, I don't know if they're actually addressed or not in in this current minutes. So, for example, number seven from the previous meeting on page thirteen, it talks about no, not seven. Um, number five, it talks about budgets and finance. Stuff for council to consider request with blah 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 blah, but it doesn't seem to be on the minutes. Didn't make it into the minutes. I don't know. I don't know if it was lumped in, into financial reports recommendation. I don't know. I don't know. What what particular so, point or do you feel is missing? Well, we discussed. So this was this was from last meeting. Mm -hmm. So we discussed this, but then later on it it sort of came up. I guess it was confusing because they came up also as part of um, the mayor's financial reports. Didn't we table that one? Uh, didn't did we? we uh, I'm not sure. Didn't we extract that one because it was included in the in the recommendation to council coming forward in the main meeting? So it moved to the main meeting. Is that? That was about the committees. That one was moved from the closed meeting to the open meeting. Well, we never we never discussed yeah, it because right. I needed to rewrite That's the report. That's right, that, but that was the one that was brought forward. I and thought that, that was, was the, the only, only one? one? I thought so. <coughs> okay. I thought so, Although too. we do have under five... Oh, sorry. No? Um, you go ahead. Financial reports recommendation. Council discussed the staff financial report and timeline in which reports should be brought forward to council, so that, that might be Is all that of it this? lumped together. Because I know there was quite a few things about yeah. the finance. I'm just, yeah, so I'm just wondering, yeah. is, is, is it all in Port F? <clears throat> I don't recall that we actually covered all of those items there because we mentioned how um, the there would be a, an account payable or not account payable report a finance report coming forward at what was it mid October the quarterly so review would be um, middle of November forty middle of November because it was forty five days after right. the last right. the third quarter that was That's for the correct. quarterly review. I mean, Helen, I mean, you're saying where that are, where, so where, the where, minutes don't accurately reflect the I, I don't discussion. Know. I don't actually even recall what we agreed on. So, and then well, now that's what minutes are for. So, I know. So, so, as far as you're concerned, the minutes do I not know. reflect the discussion. Because I know you took Here's when we sheet. discussed this, you kind of took charge of it, and then I don't know what the action points were. Uh, yes, in fact, thank you for jogging my memory. I think we said that. Um, 
that I would take this away over the next period of time. Um, I don't think it made it onto the yes, agenda. Yes, that's actually. all. That's uh, uh, well, it was on the agenda. Uh, that's that is the okay. agenda that you're so that, holding. Okay, so then, then I guess to Helen's point, matching this, which is more than just the financial stuff. But then uh, I think the part about the financial reports recommendation, um, which would be 7F. I don't know what the... That, was, that would be this, which has similar points in it. Which was all going to be the whole takeaway thing. So, the, yeah. Okay, well, there's nothing here about well, it. Nothing, that, there's uh, nothing counts. here in the in a minute. So, good watchdog and Helen. Yeah, that says anything about Ron taking stuff okay, away. So and coming back with stuff. Well, yeah. <laughs> and the item in in seven F in the minutes where it says a resolution will be brought forward at the next regular council meeting. Well, that was going to follow within hours. Is that that recommendation? I don't think we did that. I think. We certainly. Well, the minutes are here. The uh, evening agenda is not there. Just to quickly refresh myself. Yeah, just to uh, take a quick look. Can I just see those two loose pieces yeah. of paper? Uh, those are, we certainly would recognize them. Now. Oh, well, there was no resolution to do this or even reference. Somehow, I think Helen has, has lasered in correctly on this that that was on the agenda. Discussed. I was going to take it briefly, very high level discussed, concurrence that I would take it away, come back in the future. The issue here is it's not in the, in the recording. Okay, so what do we need to say there? Do you have the old agenda in front of you, Helen? No? No. We can uh, defer it. Let's, let's, let's take the discussion offline. Let's just not approve the... Approve Let's minutes. just not approve the minutes. Yeah. So what's the correct thing? Tabling the minutes? You could defer. Deferring defer. is, defer. is inappropriate okay. to take. So just for Ellen, Shauna's clarity, uh, copy what, copy them, back, yeah. what exactly is being moved here? I, this was on the agenda mm -hmm. these, uh, for the strategy session mm -hmm. and not in the minutes. Well, I think Point F, financial report, is in the minutes, but it doesn't really, I'm not sure what the doesn't, actual plan yeah. yeah, and, and Ron, okay. you remember that you were going to take it away. Yeah, so then I think, uh, I think really we would probably take, okay, there we go. We would take out the last sentence of F, uh, of the two sentence thing before the action. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Councillor McLaughlin uh, to bring these matters forward in the future. In future. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for that clarity. When, when in the future. Because we probably need those for the. Two well, we didn't say there are just too many of them to. I, and to quite calendar. frankly, most of those I mean, are I, I think, pointless to budget. Yeah. Oh, I, they are. Okay. Yeah. So well, this, pointless to budget maybe, but uh, there, that doesn't make it any less valid. No, no, uh, but my point was budget. Yeah. Oh, I see. I oh, okay, I get yeah. your point. But, but there's much, much more than that. Yeah. So I, I think being vague at this point and just having some. And that is the things. discussion. We didn't yeah. establish a deadline, so th that would accurately reflect just to say yeah. at some point in the future. So that's good, fine. Good pickup, Helen. Does that adequately cover off both those items there? Because the other one was in the regular council meeting, so it doesn't even pertain here. No, no, no these are both from those um, afternoon meeting. They are? Yeah. But they were... The recommendation, even? I think so. At least... What, what did it say on top? Recommendation received. No, no. Is no. it CO? Um, oh, it doesn't say what meeting. Oh, no, no, at the very top. The header. meeting. Top right-hand corner. Council strategy meeting both? and council strategy meeting. Okay, so they were both council strategy. Um, okay, so well, this would only seem to indicate that, we, that we've made it in two, unless there's other ones. I haven't noticed this at all, to be honest. So, are those two the same things? Similar. They're very similar. Even some of the words okay, well then the just to say, uh, What's the format of the first one? Well, pick one. It was a report? I think your well, report was Well, one was your report, or the, yeah, the other one was the email that you sent. No, this wasn't mine. This is Helen's. Uh, was this, was this correspondence? 
Right? No, this no. was part of our. We're adopting was... minutes right now, so we're just fine. We haven't gotten very far. No, it was uh, just for discussion. <laughs> point. Or maybe we'll just be fixing it. We're <laughs> sure. about our report. Because then you said you were going to put it in a report. Which you did. Which you did. But it's the same day, so I couldn't have yeah. obviously There it is. Actually, there's most of it there. Yeah. All this is reading here. Huh? Yeah, but this, okay. So let's call this the official one. Yeah. This is some kind of correspondence thing because this was actually my e email, Ron. You're right. Well, I recognize some of my wording. Well, I think it was. Well, I, I think off this, there was you and Helen were back to back seeing this stuff, and it may be yeah. a final morph version. But in terms of, um, I think just to nip to the point here. I think changing that second sentence accomplishes what we want, mm -hmm. and this is my takeaway. For that, yeah, yeah. that's well, correct. Well, and then them both away. Here sure. in the minutes, we're actually discussing some of the items here in yeah. subs in, in section C. Yeah, so some of it does show up, like, but then some of it doesn't. Council discuss which requested items were of priority, and who would be accountable for each item. Council awards and mayor to follow up with item seven. Yeah. Here it is. So on the financial stuff, I was mine to take away, which is on the F piece. Yeah. Okay. On the council request to staff document. Okay, so I think with the change that we noted there, yep, we're, we're good. good. Okay. So, just so that uh, the minutes are clear and reflect what council would like them to, can Shauna, can you repeat what you've got for the I minutes have, then? Um, item seven F, financial reports recommendation. The last sentence, a resolution will be brought forward to the next regular meeting, is being crossed out and adding Councillor McLaughlin to bring these matters forward in the future. Yeah. Okay. okay, everybody good with that? Good, thanks. Uh, okay, uh, good catch there, Helen. Even though it was ultimately covered off in various places. Anything else? So I'll move adoption. Can I have a second? And all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Business arising. So. Um, remind me how we do this. We do first the action items out of the minutes, uh, and then we Shana, go to the report. Shauna has very nicely put it all in one piece. Are they all so the same, Shauna? So you don't have to flip back. Oh, yeah. I put, I, we decided, Kevin, I decided to try it this way. Okay, so, so we don't have to... So everything is now on that page. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. And actually, I would ask that we do it that way all the way in the future, that we carry forwards are all over versus flipping back and forth. Absolutely. I like that when I went through the minutes yeah. earlier, because I could just see yeah. exactly what we're talking about. Because previously we did it only uh, after the first go around. That's right. So this is now all, all encompassing. Great. Okay. So let's go through those then. Uh, starting at the top, seven B new business council with pension remuneration. Staff to research and clarify what is included in the one third tax free portion of the council expense. Okay, so I did um, confirm that um, these are expenses are expenses are incidental to the discharge of the office. So based on that, I thought for clarity with the council remuneration bylaws going for third reading tonight. So to make it more clear, I had some suggested wording that we could add to the bylaw and then we could change it for tonight. And it would basically just be adding a line. We have the original line talking about remuneration, saying one church one third shall be paid as an allowance for incidental expenses incurred in the discharge of the duties of the office. And then add a, a second point saying that the one-third allowance is for incidental expenses incurred in the discharge of duty within the geographical area of the village of Lions Bay. Examples of incidental expenses include personal vehicle costs, mileage, and home office equipment and supplies. So just to sort of give an example, we're talking about then mileage just within the village of Lions Bay and then our expense policy will address other expenses, but that was just sort of to clarify what would be included in your one-third allowance. So, I, I, sorry, I don't even know what this one-third allowance is. When we file income tax, we can deduct a third from it? Is that? No. 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 It goes into a second box, municipal offices allowance. It's, when you get your T4, it, it has two-thirds of your comp already calculated for it. Also, I don't even have to, I don't have to worry about it. Really. No. Ask no. your account. Basically, what it means is when we pay you remuneration, only two thirds of it is taxed and one third is not taxed. But I don't have to worry about it because you file. Yeah, you'll get your T4. But the only thing you have to sort of worry about is um, when you put expense claims into the village for reimbursement. I'm just sort of explaining what you can't claim yeah, for. Yeah, because you're. Already, yeah, okay. Because I would the one suggest third we actually expand, although it only, usually only applies to the mayor or, well, no, actually to the delegate to um, metro board and committees. 
um, the same applies. Well, that will be covered off in our expense policy, so we'll talk well, about... Well, except that for I mistakenly was claiming mileage for tenants at Metro meetings. Mm -hmm. I was claiming it off the village. Well, as I think all of us were when we went to the council council yeah. or to the community forum or wherever. So, yeah, and I mean, you know, Helen's the alternate at the, at the GBRD. Um, yeah, so Jim is the alternate the at, at uh, TransLink. Now, as it happens, TransLink doesn't give a municipal office to us. So that is a problem. He's probably in the area anyways. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I mean, the, the thing is, I think it would behoove us to put it in specifically for Metro right. as well. Because I pr was proposing the next point when we talk about expense remuneration, council members may be reimbursed for casual kilometrage when required to travel on business beyond the boundaries of Village of Lions Bay unless their mileage is reimbursed by other organizations such as Metro Vancouver. And that includes things like parking. So, you know, I have to pick up my Tons. parking cost mm -hmm. as well because Metro also gives a one-third allowance. Mm -hmm. So are they reimbursed? No, they're not reimbursed. I'm not reimbursed mileage by Metro. Mm -hmm. It's covered off by a similar situation. So it's, we have to tighten up on that word. So we just don't claim for mileage when we go to Metro? Yeah. Yeah, what parking. we're saying is when you, if you're reimbursed by a third party, then you can't claim I'm not reimbursed. From, you're reimbursed through your, your tax-free allowance. Yeah, it's not strictly reimbursement. If I didn't go, I'd still get the money. If you didn't go, you If I lived next door, if I walked. If you walked. But the intent of that fund. Yeah, I just want to get the wording right because there's no reimbursement involved. I, you know, I don't, I don't submit a claim or anything. It just happens. So, okay, that's fine. We can touch on that one when we get there. Uh, will we have the... The, the third, that all that text ready for the third Yes, reading. that was the idea. If you're comfortable with this, I mean, we can just leave it. We can just verbally clarify what it's for, or you have the option of putting the wording in the municipal bylaw. I benchmarked some bylaws. Most don't explain what it is, but a couple did. So I sort of tweaked the wording from that. Right. So, good. like I say, it can be a verbal explanation, or you can add it to the bylaw, whichever you prefer. Good. So, which would you prefer? <laughs> um. um the wording that I discussed, or yeah. do you just want to keep it as it is and we'll, we'll know what the incidental no, is? No, no, I think it's, although well, some of that's more expense policy than a bylaw yeah. issue. It's not a bylaw, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I don't think it's a, yeah. I don't think it's a bylaw issue at all. Yeah. I mean, the question arose, someone would, just wanted to know what does the one third cover? So, yeah. um, I, I would say it's more a policy issue. Yeah. Yeah. So I, no, let's not change the bylaw. It should okay. be in like the new councillor's 101 yeah. kit or something like that, because if we oh, it's an expensive the new councillor's, the sophomores too, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a lot point. more to expense policy than than you put in a bylaw. Like you know, if we flew on business to Ottawa, business or economy, you know, what's mm. the policy? There is none. That, there is none. Yeah. Yeah. And that segues nicely into the next point. But um, okay, yeah, you got. So, oh, oh, yes, it does. Thank you. Yes. Just like we planned. So <laughs> we will not include the definition, and and most don't. You know, most of the ones I benchmark don't. But it just. You know, just for clarity, I wanted to explain because that was the actual question: what is covered in the one-third allowance? And that was the answer. Yeah, good. Okay. So, okay. So this will come tonight for third reading. Good. Okay. So let's segue into the next one. So the next one: um, staff to update policy statement regarding travel reimbursement. So how this started is we had the existing policy, and we just had a couple of specific points. But on second thought, um, staff would like to review the entire policy and come back to council with a new revised policy to make it more relevant, um, more detailed, and uh, more, more comprehensive. As I think just tweaking these two things we talked about last week isn't sufficient. So um, we'd like to go back, benchmark other municipalities. And I think this should be much longer to talk about everything you've spoken about. You had given us a sample of one from the private sector. So staff would work on that and then just come back with the revised expense I'm policy. all for that. So uh, I think this is too simplistic and some things in it aren't really relevant. Everybody good with that? Yeah. Do that on the nod? Okay, good, thanks. And so on that <laughs> note, um, we did, speaking of the benchmarking, we did go back and benchmark because I would like to um, readdress the, um, the alcohol. Our current policy said it is not reimbursed and I, I'd like to revisit that mm -hmm. as the CFO, that's, right. that's all right. We benchmarked Kelowna, Belcara, Regional District of Kootenay Boundary, Columbia, Shuswa, Comox Valley, Souk, District of North Vancouver, and Skeena, Queen Charlotte and none of them allow alcohol reimbursement. They explicitly excluded. They explicitly ex excluded, and the other ones we benchmarked didn't say either way, but these specifically excluded. And um, I think um, 
interim CAO I was going to speak on that as well that I just um, I am concerned about allowing alcohol re well I'll tell you I, uh, precedent. I don't know if you, you remember it was on PBS a long time ago yes minister and yes prime minister it was a TV I series remember. and uh, I reread I have the books and I reread the books and so Humphrey Appleby who was the civil servant um, went to lunch with his pal and got a bottle of 61 Chateau Lafitte which is a thousand dollar bottle of wine and I thought that's terrible even though it's fiction he's screwing the taxpayer and I thought hang on a sec at what point does it <laughs> so <clears throat> I've converted my views okay Okay, and I know last week um, we had mentioned it being Puritan, and to, to be clear, it's not a statement on whether you should or should not drink. There's no issue with having alcohol with meals. It's just the reimbursement of it, and I, I think it just sends a bad message to the taxpayer that we're paying for a $1,000 bottle of wines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, in this day and age, we include hallucinogens and all kinds of other things like pot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how far do you want to brush this? for it? Maybe. Those are some interesting dinners. <laughs> yeah, well, that would not be a legitimate claim because it's not a legitimate <laughs> expense. <laughs> but sometimes people want well, well, except if we went to dinner in Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Shall we open up the, the after jar dinner cigar and massages and things like that? Too? Well, so yeah, I mean, the, the issue is, you know, what's. I think the issue is, I don't know what to allow any of it. It's a very wide, <laughs> wide ranging council. Thing. In you room do what movies? you want in your private lives, but you can't. Ah, the, the CFO will not room? sign off an expense oh, report uh, for that. Hey, I feel so it's all in that chart there. It's in the real world. We're not going back <laughs> in 1929, though, right? <laughs> okay, that, that is before <laughs> even my time. <laughs> So, Prohibition? <laughs> um, I, I say, from my standpoint, I, I understand that okay. it, it's, it's not the private sector, it's the public sector. It's a different kettle of fish. What does everybody else say? I agree. It's not. It, it, all my years in the provincial government, you don't do it. Alcohol is for your own account. Alcohol is not. It's on your own account. That's mm -hmm. it. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's the end of it. Yeah. Even I in the would, private I, sector. I would be diametrically opposed, uh, where in my line of work it was... Uh, it's the client's deal. It is yeah. what it is. And yeah, actually, for uh, for you, uh, Carl, if you're with Fassbender or something like that, and you're lucky enough to, you know, he's lonely for a few minutes, you're lonely too, and, uh, you know, the couple of, you have a few brewskis, I'm sure within the Victoria policy he would be buying, but he chose chooses not to, so you have to, to get your desalination. I find that hard to swallow myself. It's all part of my one-third allowance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but, I mean, just... I know. The problem you also, allows it. You wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't need it because your winning personality would win in that situation, right? No, I would need to drink heavily. <laughs> it's, it's, it's but it would be for my own account. <laughs> it's less important that Carl drink heavily, but, you know... Yeah. The road to yes comes easier. So. But now that's different, right? That's sort of a persuasive technique. I'm sure I could claim that if I had to ply him with drink to get him to say yes. Well, is the recording on? <laughs> Dear God. Sorry, Minister. I didn't mean that. So let's leave it I'm opposed. Okay, fine. I mean, of course I'd like it, but I can understand the point very well. Can't go both ways on us. No, no, exactly. Okay, so um, I think that gives you enough indication that we'll just we'll make these decisions on the nod. There's no need to take. Yeah. Um, um, it was just um, advice for when we prepare the more detailed yeah, expense. Beauty. We will keep yeah. that. In. We have a timeline on that. Yes. Um, soon. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, soon's better no, than I later. Am, I guess I could get this. Not the next council meeting, but the council meeting after, which would be um, first of November. November. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing yeah. pressing, but it would be yeah. nice to know what the yeah. rules are. We just want to benchmark it. We just want to get it right the first time, and it would be a bit time-consuming. So I, I wouldn't have it ready for the next one, but I think the one after that we'd have it ready for, and then we have our clarity. Fantastic. Okay. Well, if I can just okay. add to that, I think it needs so, so much clarity that the residents can read it and understand it, so we don't mm -hmm. have to keep explaining it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it is a public-facing document, and it is, it is a, um, I'll call it a PR thing. But it is important for people to realize that we're conscious of appearances as well as practice. Good optics. Okay. Yes. Optics. It's a good way to say it. I thought you said orthodontics for a second. Because yeah. <laughs> that's on top of my mind. Give, talking about expenses. Not on your one third. <laughs> <laughs> you know what teeth cost? Um, okay. Uh, we'll move on to new business parking plan select committee recommendation. Hello. 
Are we, we're still waiting for the, when was the application deadline? The 8th. 8th. So the applications for, to volunteer for the committee is going through the, the office. office. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know what the situation is. What is the situation? We've received several, have not reviewed them at all because it's yeah. appropriate to see them all together. Yeah. That. Okay, well that's good. How much is several? I don't know. I don't have a count. And um, on my part, Andrew, Oliver, and uh, Scott Anto have said that they would be willing to participate or volunteer their services. Good. Okay, this is a select committee, so there's no requirement for even numbers of elected officials and, and uh, non, so that's good. On that note, um, Andrew and Scott then would have to put in um, an application. Do they? I, I would think, yeah, I think so too. Do they? To be okay. consistent, yeah. Do and I? It would look like we were preferential treatment if they were being awarded. I think everyone would need to. Because when we have, when we staff other committees, the other volunteers don't all hand in an application. Should they? Well, we requested yeah. it for this one. Exactly. For all the <laughs> Sorry, no. For People this particular have. one? No, for other ones. See all the other, other ones? Other ones, no. Yeah. No, that's uh, whoever's on, you can trust the best. Yeah. Yeah, but this one, well, if there's interest, clearly there's interest, people seem to think that um, they have okay. some input to give. Uh, do I need to input an, an application? And so, no, what I'm would be the official. intent of that, Your Worship? Because I want to be on the committee. <laughs> I thought you were a de facto member. Maybe I, I am de facto member. Ex officio of member of every committee, yeah. a non voting ex officio. Do we have a number of people, a desired number of people on the committee? No. We didn't. Did so we establish? But we wanted to keep it lower rather yeah. than higher. No, I understand that, but you, you need to be able to have a balance. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And I'm, I'm saying if you have, like, I, I'm just thinking if you have two, like Scott Ando and Andrew Oliver on there, you want to be able to balance those off. That's all I'm saying to make it. Well, we don't know what the positions would be. Uh, I have no idea. In fact, I mean, we're looking for practical solutions. Well, of course. But you know, you, you're going to have minimum of four people, I would think, on the committee. Yeah, this is not done by by vote and resolution. We, well, I think we had said four residents. Did we said two. I couldn't two councillors. Mm -hmm. Something like that. This is Helen's committee. I'm fine with exactly. Yeah. this. Exactly. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, it's up to you, really. And That's your committee. I mean, you're going to have to come back and answer to us. So fill your boots. Yeah, we. I mean, we know what the, Well, we want to see what the deliverable is going to be once the committee's decided on it. But I would hope that it's a comprehensive parking plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll move on to on that one. Thank you. Uh, Sorry, did we skip 7C? Yeah, did we missed the third one, Carl. Oh, beg your pardon. Uh, we did. Council Watterson may be able to follow up with item 7, Village Master Plans on the Council Request Staff Document, which is floating around. Can we just remind ourselves what, the, what that was, please, Helen? Um, it's the one you marked up in pink. Yeah, and I actually retyped it. Oh. You were going to... Uh, put, I think, champions against all these various plans that we hope to accomplish in the next year or two, I think. And these were the ones, so I put names to the ones that we've discussed already, and then you were going to um, come back and assign... Well, to be perfectly honest, I didn't, so, uh, but it's doable very quickly. Um, this is ambitious. I know. That's not I'm thinking it shouldn't, should be 216 to 217. Well, some of them I will be shelved, I, I suggest, although many of them are either underway or done. So we'll, let's start at the top, and then I think it'll become... Thanks for doing this, Helen. So infrastructure uh, is, is Fred's Ballywick, and the infrastructure master plan is underway. There's two issues there that, uh, that Fred, I'd, I'd like you to bear in mind. The first is, do we fairly quickly do an adjunct request for a desalination feasibility study. Why I say quickly is because the infrastructure planning grant program that's available, I, I sat down with the guy who administers it uh, last week at UBCM. His name is Brian Bedford, a very <coughs> amenable, approachable, professional government type of guy. And he gave me a chapter on verse, and I will just quickly run through the, the things for you now because uh, I'm talking about master plans. Um, I was specifically interested in hearing from him on timing. He was speaking very fast, so I have to... No. <coughs> Sorry, I, I have with one of Sorry. Sorry, 
Okay, Susan Anton. Brian Beth looks pretty neat scotch. Okay, so IPGs uh, are open for application year round. Um, you send in the application upon which they send you back an acknowledgement within a day or two, after which all monies that you spend covered by that application are potentially reimbursable. In other words, you keep track. That doesn't mean to say that they will reimburse them. They now have two um, evaluation cycles a year. Um, the first round approval is on now, meaning the deadline is imminent in a matter of uh, weeks, not months. Um, this is, it's a soft deadline. Uh, you know, he, he said there's no, this, that's why it's so hard to find this data. You have to talk to these people. The decision point is April or May on the first round of infrastructure planning grants. How the infrastructure planning grant is, it's on a sliding scale. They will reimburse $10,000 on a $15,000 spend. They will re reimburse less on a, on a lesser spend. But they'll only go up to $10,000. Okay, so that's the first, so that's more than we thought. Um, they typically approve 40 to 60 for each intake. Um, the hit rate today is about uh, one in every two and a half or one in every three applications, which is pretty good. He said in the old days it used to be one in 25. And 15,000 15, is the top amount uh, uh, reimbursable of which they will reimburse 10, meaning five for us. The point for you, Fred, is that the, if now the challenge is we don't yet know what uh, ACOM is doing in the infrastructure master plan. They may be touching on it very little, or not at all, or quite a lot. So the thing is, we would have to, if we decided to do anything about this as uh, authorizing a spend for a feasibility study for a scoping and feasibility study for D-cell, uh, we'd have to work with AECOM. And we'd probably have to let the contract to them. But now it's under 20,000. Can it be done sole source? Under 20. Could I speak to it? Yeah. So um, I would suggest that your feasibility study should be outside of your infrastructure master plan. They are two separate Yeah, one's detailed, one's a master entities. plan. And you would need to be budgeting your um, matching funds for that feasibility study. Well, if we were to be conservative, we might need to budget 15000 because that's about what I would envisage a feasibility study would cost. It's a desk study, that, you know, that we actually lay it out quite uh, in some detail in the in the infrastructure committee's recommendation uh, how you would do these things. Although we don't actually touch on these, so okay. Well, that's something we'll have to think about then uh, at at council level. Um, maybe you can um, think it through, Fred, because the it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation as far as the infrastructure master plan is concerned. But I think, uh, in my inclination, is exactly as Anne's is to treat it as a separate project. Mm -hmm to sole source it to AECOM because it's under the New West uh, Free Trade Agreement, whatever it's called. What is it called? New West Partnership. Partnership Trade Agreement. Um, so we, we can sole source it. They, they can hit the ground running. They're already halfway there. Mm -hmm. So that we can get this application in. Which is a very fuzzy set of deadlines, interestingly. You can throw the 15 grand into the 2016 budget, so it's not material now to start you going. Because the cash would only happen then anyway. Although, y yes, that's true. I mean, this is kind of a shuffling the pee around a little bit. <coughs> yeah. You can certainly pop it on the IC agenda anyhow. We can well, so that's what I was going to suggest. I've actually got a list started to you to, for suggestions for this next IC agenda. Maybe we can talk about it. I was going to ask for that tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it's on there. There's another thing which I want to talk to you. It's called Réseau. It's French. R-E-S apostrophe O, like water. It's the Canadian network, water network, something. I don't know, but I haven't even looked it up yet. That's an impression. Oh, sorry. And we probably are wanting to talk about the same thing, the purchasing policy? Yes, and I had one other question as well. Okay. I, I just wanted to suggest that our pur purchasing policy... Um, recommends or requires, I'm not sure, I haven't had a close look at it, that we look for, even if we're not putting out for RFP, that we look for quotes. And there's there's some value to that. Absolutely. You may find yeah, it. I, I have no problem with that. Over 2000 Over 2000 Yes. It requires rather the than, quotes. Rather than sole sourcing to AECOM, mm -hmm. that we at least find some mm -hmm. yeah. alternatives. Makes sense. Um, neighbor, my question was, in terms of this grant, can we get a grant for the actual infrastructure master plan itself? 
because that was our original intent um, when we budgeted it. You know, I never, even, I, never, I never even connected those dots. Um, certainly money is being spent now. No, I believe the project's commenced. Okay. Yeah, that sometimes is required, yeah. but I did want to yeah. check. Unless we could get AECOM to break it up into discrete projects, discrete meaning separate. And there are very strict um, there are requirements to not to do that. Yeah, yeah. I think we, and I'll also just point out now, uh, when the budget discussion comes up, that we had budgeted $10,000 revenue from the infrastructure yeah. planning grant, which yeah. we're not now going to get. Okay, so be it. Um, we were prepared to spend the full 150 uh, out of reserve, so that looks like what we're going to end up doing. Mm -hmm. However, the diesel project is not a hypothetical pie in the sky project. It, it's it's a strategic project. We don't know what uh, what risks we face next year in the event of a two-year drought. Mm -hmm. Maybe no risk at all. Maybe the water is ready recharged all the way to the top. We just don't. Know. So we need to find out. Okay. So that was infrastructure. That was a long talk on infrastructure. Sign signage. Uh, I'm working with that one with uh, Nikki, and leave it with me for now. Parking, Helen, you've got emergency. Fred, can you give us a quick update on the status of the emergency plan, or maybe Anne? You know. um, Fred is probably much better, or Councillor Bain is much better able to speak to that. Yeah, uh, Chris Leonard is pretty well finalized the whole thing, and I don't know if he's dropped the copy off to your office yet. Oh, he has. Okay, because we got it on email form. Um, that's the only form I've well, seen. That's uh, we're to review it and get back to him, and then once he's made it, um, assimilated all the bits and pieces, he will present something to us, and we can present it to council. We, all of us. But that's where we are. Okay. Um, good. Uh, I note that certainly I was not asked for any input whatsoever. So if the input has come from where? Uh, it's come from staff, myself, uh, there's been a bit from the emergency services themselves. I don't know if he contacted the RCMP, um, that part I'm not sure of. Uh, he had been working quite closely with Nikki through the process until her, her departure. But I think uh, she had given enough information and allowed uh, him to contact the staff to fill in the blanks. Okay, I think he's got a so I, I, do you get a sense that it's going to be a worthwhile, usable document? I get a sense it'll be a lot better than what we had before. How's that? Okay, well, I'll read. I'll read into that what I think I'm reading into that. Um, strategic wildfire initiative. How does that mesh? The uh, interface risk mitigation. <laughs> Typically, they're going to be separate plans. They yeah. don't have to coordinate. The. An emergency plan may want to recognize the risk, um, interface wildfire risk. I don't I don't know whether this one does or not. I haven't looked okay. for that particular <coughs> item. For to qualify for um, UBCM funding for interface um, fuel management, both uh, prescription and um, what's the other term? Yeah. Um, um, yeah. You do need to have a specific wildfire management plan. Yeah, well, as you know, I'm, I'm particularly concerned about that. There's, there's so much deadfall out there, up there and down there, <coughs> top to bottom, that it scares me. Yeah. We do have a strategic wildfire plan already on, on record. Do you? Yeah, we do. Uh, they had uh, applications of grant money for updating it, but when I was looking on their website for the UBCM, um, for example, strategic wildfire protection, that says applications are currently being accepted. The application deadline is uh, October 2nd of this year. So we're kind of out of luck on a lot of that. And uh, some other ones. Oh. Well, they're putting structural protection units on the. Well, we can get into that later. But, um, most of the stuff from uh, wildfire per, um, grant funding has, uh, is already being fulfilled. Uh, there's no openings that I can find, so I think uh, we're a little late to the race. Again, yeah. it's something you would want to budget because they don't fully fund it, and one of the problems is they will only fund um, areas identified as high risk. If it's a moderate risk or low risk, they won't provide funding. But that has so to be, you, you, you first have to define the areas, right? Uh, That's what your plan does for you. The, the plan, the emergency plan, or the no, wildfire, the wildfire, wildfire, wildfire plan. plan. It was done in uh, 2000, submitted in 2005 or 2006. Okay, it was relatively recent. Do we have any high-risk areas? 
Uh, not particularly. There's some general thoughts, though. Uh, the general consensus is the even though the higher up parts are uh, closer to the forest, they're less likely to be close to the source of the ignition because the fire does is thought not to come down the hill so much as up. So our biggest threat is something from the high or the beach or something and going up the hill. But you're right, we do have a lot of deadfall and everything, and the fuel load is significant. So if it ever gets going, we do have a problem. So, you know, when we go through a summer like we are, we did this year, we are at high risk. And I think that supports our concerns about closing the forests and all that sort of stuff. I can see the need to start th thinking through re-updating that. Why? Because I suspect we're going to end up with a lot of dead trees as a result of, of this drought that we don't know about yet. Um, but I see a lot of stressed cedars out there already, uh, especially down on the centennial. Um, there's a, there was a big nurse log there. I, I've been going on about it for four years. Um, a, a big old dead for long before logging. You know, it was 10 feet diameter. And it had sort of this size trees growing out of it. Mm -hmm. Well, it fell over this summer. And so one tree this big came right across the trail. It <coughs> crushed anybody on it, but <coughs> fell at night because it wasn't there the one day and was there the next day when I took the dog. Um, and the next day, somebody had bucked it up without being asked. You know, some resident went down there with a the chainsaw to clear the trail. But I think we're going to see a lot more of that. We're going to see nurse, nurse logs collapsing and twisting, um, making it worse. And you know, it's, this summer is going to really, really uh, multiplicatively add to the, the load. So maybe it is time for a fire study update. I, I'm noticing just on my cedars. On our property, that they're stressed. Like I've got, we've got, we've got dead, literally dead branches yeah. that we don't normally get. We get the little, the little bits and pieces coming down, but now we've got whole branches that are actually dying on the trees, which isn't good. Yeah, so. yeah. It's especially the cedars because they, well, they, they, they use a lot of water. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and when we get into the November yeah. storms, they could easily come down. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, that's a whole separate issue as well as the fire one. Let's add that to the budget request list. Then. I unfortunately think so. I mean, I think I think our budget discussion is going to be short because really, we know what we need. It's a whole bunch of We've got stuff. Two big ones here already. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was one other thing that was to do with the uh, emergency plan, and that came up in the electoral area subcommittee meeting at Metro, which I'm on, as you know. Um, they would like to have um, both the Ocean Point and Stracking Point communities attend our safety forum um, and participate in, maybe not formally, but certainly be aware of our emergency plan. They don't have one because they are strata. You know, they're not a, they're not incorporated communities. They're they're one strata, one nothing, one is just unincorporated. Um, so just bear that in mind um, when the time comes for it that we should include them. Just remind me, when was the safety forum? Is it February? Uh, yeah. Is it February? Uh, it's February? Is it spring? Late winter, spring? Yeah. I think it was spring. Yeah. Is it yeah, spring? I think it was, yeah. I think it was, I think it was late March or April. I don't think it, it was, was organized by Ruth yes. Simons. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, and it was, we really need to do a full court press on getting people out for that one. I would suggest it becomes officially a mandated thing. The police were there, the ambulance were there, uh, Squamish Wildfire were there. It was really, really eye-opening. A, to see how many people are involved in these things, and B, to hear their, their worries. It was there, for example, that I, this is the first time I ever gave us any indication what the snowpack was this year, and the guy said, the wildfire guy from Squamish said it's going to be about 15% of average. So I just mentioned that for what it's worth, that, uh, that Electoral Area A would like to participate, this part of Electoral Area A would like to participate in our safety forum. Point and Ocean, Ocean point. point. Now I'll just remind you that there's also Montezambit Wind, which is the part of Montezambit that's not in West Van. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's the northerly half of that exit. So there's Sunset Marina, that's all in West Van, and then there's the other half. You know whether whether that's a community we we can uh, offer any assistance to. I don't know. You can't get you can barely get a car down their roads. They have no hydrants. Um, they've had they've had no maintenance down there forever. But that's a that's a different discussion. Um, well, just for for clarity, on the reason Ruth uh, Simons is headed it up is with Blockwatch. She has to have annual meetings, and so she just broadened it to include more to it. So maybe the Blockwatch aspect of it could be the bait for them to come in as well. 
but I'm, I mean, Bruce is probably going to continue doing it as long oh, as Oh, I hope so, yeah. But I, w I would suggest that we consider giving her an official mandate, just like we did for her work on the, uh, on the environmental assessment. So she sort of carries it. Okay, um, let's leave that one there for now. Communication, resident engagement. Helen? I don't actually remember what this was. I know we talked about having some kind of communication plan, but then subsequent to that, I was told that um, op staff is working on a communications policy. We certainly could develop a, a strategy or a policy. Are you actually working on one right now? Absolutely, but yeah. do remember, this is an ambitious list. The yeah. more that gets added to the list, the yeah. longer each item takes. Well, as we will see when we touch on our council strategy document, communication and engagement is the top priority for this, this council as identified when we sat down and discussed it. That's not going to say that it's going to be the same over the next full four years, but it would seem that we want to, to me, that we want to put some priority on this. Why? Because there are channels that are currently not being used. Um, there are a lot of people that don't know what's going on. I find it very revealing to read the, the back chat in email threads that uh, got copied inadvertently, the, the one about um, uh, the weekly budget news springs to mind. It's interesting to me what some people find interesting and don't find interesting. I'd like to know that. And <coughs> tell them stuff they want to find interesting. And give them a, a channel for useful information. Um, I'm just thinking of staff. Are you thinking of a pillory? <laughs> 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 well, who's going to be in it? <laughs> Rotation. <laughs> if staff is already working on parts of it, then what can we, as me as a counselor, work on? Well, let's let's get an understanding of when do we see a draft. I'm not going to commit to a date. We are working on a correspondence policy as a first part of that. Okay. Well, that's also good. So that's also part that's of. That's on the October 20th agenda. It okay. was one drafted by um, Mandy, which we're just... Um, I've seen forward. that one, and it's good. And I gave some suggestions to Mandy on that. I don't know if they made it into mm -hmm. that or if it's still the same one that I had originally seen. Okay. Yeah, I mean, as you know, I, I keep going on about fonts and colors and borders and paper style and everything because it's important. It shows consistency of planning. And that would be communication. This is more correspondence, making sure we're handling correspondence, um, you know, emails, correspondence from um, residents, you know, the proper way, what should go in the council package, what shouldn't. Oh, so not like it was having that's a just, salutation or something like that. Well, that's a style guide issue. Mm -hmm. It's all part and parcel of the same Yeah, this was, and um, that was sort of the first step, is just the correspondence. Because um, that's important as well, that we don't, um, you know, a piece of correspondence did get missed in the summer, so we thought it was time to... Yeah. You know, bring forward so the policy. Operationals. Well, but, but for all of mayor and council, like addressing if you were to get an email from a resident, should that be in the correspondence package if it came to you directly? And if it, it should be, then it needs yeah. to be directed to staff. So that, that's what it's addressing. Let's you and me put together a framework. So this would be one of them. So correspondence. Uh, but, they're, but they're already doing it. We're doing yeah, correspondence. Well, so that's done. Yeah. But, or that's under work. But there's also a style guide element to it. There's... Um, email, electronic communication policy. But is that under our purview? Would it be a staff guide? Normally, doing that level of work would be staff's work. We've got the electronic communication policy already in It's place. just an amalgamation into one big policy document, um, one overarching policy document. Uh, is it, uh, yeah, I, th I think it's within council's purview to, see, to, set, to set the tone for what it is that we expect to see. Um, you know, how do you address people? Um, Service levels. I don't know. What, I don't know what's going to be in there. Uh, really, I just sort of. I would extract a lot of work that I've done previously and, and rejigger it for uh, for Lions Bay. So let's you and me take that one. Okay. Good. Beach remediation KB. Um, I have sent out the the suggestions. I, I believe it's it's with Nikki, uh, and it was to do with just to give you a heads up must-haves that were identified in the risk assessment, um, nice-to-haves and, and, and you know, gold-plated taps in the bathroom. Yeah. The one thing that is a little up in the air right now is, as you remember, the beach washroom replacement project. If I remember correctly, it was, it was brought to us by residents. They had a plan, as in a written plan, not, not a, a plan, on, on a, not, not a design, and they were told to work with staff, meaning Nikki, 
um, to come up with uh, an RFQ, RFP, can't remember which one, um, for beach wash room replacement. It was going to go out to bid, and they were going to bid on it, this, this group of residents, so, including license contractor, finance, blah, 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 blah. And the bid was going to be a dollar. They had already indicated okay. that their bid was going to be a dollar, okay. um, meaning that they would fund it through donation. Uh, and that's sort of died. They seem to think now that they've given enough staff needs to take it from here. So that's a project that... It's not quite my recollection. Okay, so it's your problem. <laughs> what was yours? I, I think the uh, the resident group uh, had ideas. Uh, they uh, were um, outspoken in, in electronic correspondence. We asked them to stand down, ergo you and I did. And you met with one of the emissaries. Again, asked them to stand down. Uh, we recognized the issue was that they they couldn't just take over the project that had to be bid, they had to win and stuff like that. Um, it would be nice if it was a dollar, I don't recall that coming out because I think there's some very hard costs here and ultimately it had to be them working with staff to make sure that everything was going forward. I'm going to presume some of the stuff uh, the village is going to pay for so it's all part of a budget piece. <coughs> Timing is important to this, I mean, assuming a show of nods here that the beach remediation this year is important, yes. So Maybe important whether we have the funds for it is another well, question. Well, it, it, yeah. it, it all ties in together. So I think that uh, my sense here is that uh, this would be something we may want to devote some time to at the next strategy meeting to figure out where we go to approach this group again and get it going. Yeah, I mean, some of this work comes out of the Infrastructure Committee, and I would actually, my sense would be, before it goes there, is that we, we hand it back to the Infrastructure Committee. If you remember, you two guys, we talked about it. You know, beach-level showers and, and the septic system, which has now been done. Uh, you know, some of this stuff can be done piecemeal. Um, washroom replacement. We've got the tree to... to the trees are... Good different issues. Well, but it's all part of, you know, at some point we're going to have to bite the bullet. But and I, mean, I think using, uh, just to talk numbers here and focus on this, I mean, I, while we have a skinny budget and a waning capital base, I believe from memory, and you may recall the number, it was 18 or 24 grand, which was your kind of quick thumb. Yeah. And that was before the assessment was done. So let's assessment of the washroom. Uh, the oh, the risk the, assessment. The risk assessment, which is kind of you know not to be glib about it, it was kind of trinket stuff around the place, but oh. all important. So even if you added in the trees, which were another five grand, just to from memory. So I'm going, you know, let's call it twenty plus another eleven. So we're talking thirty here, uh, and that's without doing too much. So that that's. I would advise everybody early on that that's a big number for the 2016 budget. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. uh, so I think really a discussion on this with the group, if the infrastructure fits into this, um, sure. But at the end of the day, those are the three main pieces: the risk assessment, the the washroom, and the trees. Yeah, yeah. Some of the items in the risk assessment are only touched on. For example, the stone steps down to the beach are, are done. You know, they need redoing. We did re underpin the wall this summer. Um, once the herring had um, done their thing, I think it was the herring. Had to wait for the herring. Um, this, this touches on a, a much larger subject, all this stuff, because we have amenities like that. We've got two beach parks. We've got washrooms, we've got water systems, we've got septic systems, things like that down there that are being used that are constantly needing maintenance. And when they were put in, the maintenance was never ever considered as part of how are we going to fund this for the future. So when I hear us talking about spending $30,000 on, on the beach washrooms, which is, I mean, that is part of us, but the thing is, where, how are we going to fund this in the future? We can't just keep saying, oh, other councils will put the money in the budget. From where? How are we going to do Like, don't we have a plan? Shouldn't we have a plan to do this going forward all the time instead of just doing it piecemeal like we are? I mean, well, so there... Anne keeps talking about the gifts that keep on giving. Um, yeah. I mean, I, go, like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't consider anything in my business that I can't refinance all the time and re... So it's just... I think in in a, in a you know you don't face that in a business, but in a public amenity thing, yeah. 
Um, you can't put an endowment together. You know, you're you know, tying up way too much money. I just so, had the answer. I said, well, if you're doing, <laughs> a, if you're doing like a theoretical a sinking fund, you know, uh, you know, putting away your capital for the yeah. this kind of thing, yeah. which, I mean, that can be certainly part of the... the, the Fundraising the, events, uh, the, uh, the, uh, you know, I don't know, yeah. three-legged race. I just, you know, you but... Well, I mean, you see that in communities, including our own, uh, yeah. where, where somebody that was a big proponent of something and, and its maintenance leaves or goes away, and the thing falls apart. I'd be surprised. Centennial Trail is a uh, case in point. Well, yeah, it's all volunteerism. It's all, like, a lot of stuff has been done by volunteers, and, the, and it, it's, it, it's been done by volunteers in good spirit and things like that, but it, the, it's, it has to go on. We have to be able to keep it. So if the volunteer part falls away, then what do we do and how do we deal with it? Well, I mean, that may be, you know, that to my mind is, is something for the OCP in which we state what village amenities and assets are. I would suggest the beach, the main beach is one of them. Um, and what do we do about it? Mm -hmm. You know, we, for example, be given a suggestion that one way to address the issue at um, Brunswick Beach, the, the nudity issue, is to make that a public beach. Yeah. And just have everybody go. That's right. The, the, yeah. the, the nudists, to, to find their privacy, will have to go somewhere else. That's actually a good solution. Yeah, that's yeah. fighting fire with fire. Maybe not. No, maybe that's the wrong analogy. But uh, turn. And it'll also take some pressure off Main Beach. You turn it into a beach. Well, yeah. that's going to cost money. Yeah. So to this piece, I think that it's it's going to be a big part of our small budget on this one. So if this one wants to go to the infrastructure for some quick glimmer over it, I mean the. I think. Carl, your certainly my recollection was that you're down a dirty plan, which was which was very thrifty, uh, and you know maybe that's the model we're looking for. Mm -hmm. I think uh, others have thought a more grand washroom scheme. Don't really know, but I think uh, we need to make a decision on X being the number. That's the number, yeah. and then we need to realign with this group again. Well, we're only talking about plans here, so leave this with me. I'm going to scope it out and then bring it to the IC. And it's going to be must-have, and that's mainly to do with landscape timbers, uh, to do with steps, and the landscape timbers are rotten. Yeah. And I believe, at a certain point, you can't run a public amenity with that level of, the insurance company said, yeah. had to go. I believe that one other thing is that the insurance risk assessment identified is that one of the swing sets is no longer code. It should probably go. Well, I think to address, par partially to address Jim's concern there, is I think we, we should have sort of a, an understanding, I don't know if you want to call it a policy, that anything we put in like that has to be low maintenance. I mean, we could have sort of a Rolls Royce looking thing that's going to be the gift that keeps giving, or we can have something that work staff can come by with very little time, maintain it. Well, yes, except uh, for example, the landscape timbers. We're replacing them with more landscape timbers. We, we're 10 years from now, just like we face now, they have to be replaced. If we did pour in place concrete, they never have to be replaced. So the question is, how well do we do it? I know why they put landscape timbers in before, because it's cheap. It's cheap. Mm -hmm. So let me scope something out and we'll bring it to the IC. So we'll leave yeah. this one there. So if it went to IC and then back to budget, we'll get yeah. this thing going and we can have a casual, as you say, nods, and then we can approach these people. I mean, I really think it's important that uh, we get off the dime quickly with this group. If they're, I guess we need to make sure that they're really serious about this and they can align with our staff in terms of scope and design so that they do hit all the pegs that they need to so that they get an, as a mandate as early as possible uh, presuming that nobody we have many bids for 50 cents and not a dollar yeah. Yeah. but uh, that would be a good problem to have. yeah that would be a big problem then uh, but I think it's important to me I've mentally thought if we're going to have this done in the uh, just to pick Canada Day as a uh, a longer date, I'd prefer it sooner, but let's say Canada Day for a long one, you pretty much have to give people a mandate for Christmas. Yeah, yeah. No, it's time to. So that's, it's, it's high on my plate because the budget number's got to be there. Okay. Okay. Leave that one with me for now. Asset management, RM. Uh, don't know what that means, but I know that the infrastructure master plan is going to give us a big story on what we have. And also, I thought we had a village asset management plan tucked somewhere deep in the thing, which is basically our insurance plan. Well, as I recall from Nikki, there's, you know, there's two schools of thought on asset management plans these days. One is time-based and one is risk-based. And, and current practice is to move towards a risk-based asset <coughs> management plan. 
um, meaning risk of mm -hmm. failing, risk of needing a replacement, all that stuff. So it's not so much age. So if your road happens to be 50 years old, but it's still fine, why replace it? Or why account for its replacement? Nikki was doing that. Could I speak a little about mm -hmm. that? Asset management ties very much into the um, tangible capital assets that um, local governments are now required to, to track. And so this speaks exactly to what you were looking exactly. for. Yeah. An asset management plan is going to look at, a great asset management plan will map out the expected lifespans of, of your assets that and give you that 40-year plan for identifying the peaks at which you're going to need money. It, will, it should also identify synergies. For example, if you've got water pipes that are aging, um, you're replacing that road at the same time. So, you know, it, it will help you identify what your priority areas are. But I don't believe we have an asset management plan that, that meets those sorts of criteria. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Now, having said that, Your Worship, you're going to have to make a decision because as a municipality, we're only eligible for one infrastructure planning grant, and you're going to have to decide, is it going to be a desalination plant? Is it going to be an asset management plant? One a year? I th think it's one a year. I'll have to check into well, the I, actual I, criteria. Well, whether an asset management plan falls under the IPG program or not, I don't know. But um, I mean, it yeah. does. Asset management planning absolutely is infrastructure planning. Yeah, of hmm. course. But, yeah. but the thing is that, first of all, with the stuff like beach, beach, beach washrooms and stuff like that, if they were listed as an asset, then we would have the ability to seek funding if, through somehow if we, if we had room in our, in our, which we don't right now, but in our uh, infrastructure stuff, that that could be, become part of it. But at least we'd have an avenue to follow to say we could do it. But right now we don't have it. We can't say we can't talk about beach, beach stuff. When you have the basis of, the, of a good asset management database, uh, and know that BDO, you know, when we went to the need to amortize uh, as, uh, for amortization, which was 2007, 2000, whenever it was, BDO did a massive amount of work to put an asset schedule together. They did, but it was a massive amount of work that everyone needed to do because at that point we didn't track assets as well. And that would be the base of what you would That's start what I'm saying. With. It's a start. It's a, just a very preliminary start. It's we wouldn't actually be starting not from that pinching. accurate. Because uh, well, of the, sure the time frame, all municipalities struggled with that, trying to identify in a very short time frame every asset you have, including stop signs, everything. And I would argue, actually, that it needs work, even from a TCA sure point of view. Well, so you're right, but that's what you'd start mm -hmm. with. But usually asset management plans, you do get consultants in to help mm -hmm. you with, because it's a massive job. Identifying your assets and then determining the life. Remaining and especially life. if you're doing it on a risk basis. Yeah. Uh, whatever we decide, I think we need to decide quickly because the deadline date for the asset management planning thing is November 13th of this year uh, to get the application in. Is that for infrastructure planning grant or a different? Asset management planning specifically. Grant? Yeah, it's on the grant program. They'll be matching grants of up to 10 grand. Um, to support activities that advance local government's asset management planning or practices and that facilitate better integration of ma asset management planning with long-term financial planning. Which ministry is that? UBCM is it's coming. Is the one that's They're the administrator. It's that must mean it's, it's federal, federal funds. It's federal funding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but that's, that, that's the start of get the plan in place so you've got the asset assets identified and you know what's what, and then you've got the grounds to continue on. But that's just to cover the the, the actual management piece of it, like listing and, and developing the, yeah, the plan as well. Yeah. Do you have time to do this in the next nine months? Is it something you could put in the hopper? I think, um, dependent on whether or not we had a consultant to help us, like I usually asset management plans, you could correct me, but are done by, by third parties. It's a sure, massive. Sure, you just need to uh, I mean, we guide We would them. provide information and guidance, um, similar to the infrastructure. $20,000, if well, we match 10000 Well, I would argue it would cost more than that. That's we what get I'm saying, $10,000, but yeah, we would have to spend more than twenty. I would suspect, for an infrastructure. Do you think we could get one? I I would you not. More yeah, yeah. I would guess that you should be able. Mind you, no. I would guess you could. Okay. I, sorry, I'm debating <laughs> geography. You're in Vancouver, so maybe it's more expensive. But I've seen them for that amount. Okay. We have less asset than maybe other municipality, yeah. right? Yeah. Your, yours would be. Yeah. Even compared to a lot of small municipalities. The idea that. of of 
of determining what the assets are. We already have parcel list anyway. Oh yes, we have a good starting point. We've got a good starting point. So the reality is it's just a question of what do we need to include and, and, and go from there. It's not like we have to go find them. No. No. We do know where they are. Yeah. So it shouldn't be, I don't That's think right. it would be that terribly expensive. Exactly. I, yeah. yeah, it's a finding them and then trying to determine um, what the useful life would replacement be. Cycles the replacement and cycle. And, replacement cycle. Yeah. Uh, Carlos is a good project, it really is, but we've got lots in our plate, lots going on. Maybe we should just uh, okay. make a diary note table as for, as Fred Flynn said, it's November. This comes well, forward in That's now. August next year. And we say, okay, let's Good, say, you know, stuff. where does this list in the the twenty seventeen council priority? Yeah, we just can't do everything, and this is one that can. You know, work. this is good talk, good stuff, big visionary stuff. But I mean, we're about to uh, do a whole bunch of things with the infrastructure, and you know, right now, like the beach washrooms look like a much bigger and more pressing deal than this. We're going to dig up some of our assets, and they're going to go away. Well, yeah. Okay, so that goes to 2017. So that would be my recommendation. I think that's uh, this, is, this is why we're in this spot. Mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't sure. agree more. That's all, but no, but I'm just saying, you know, I agree with you well, about timing. But the thing yeah. is, it's the reason everybody else has always been in the same spot. Right. We've got the community, we've got the community halls to deal with. We've got this to deal with, that to deal with. To tell you a bit of a yeah. bow on this, looking at the clock over my right shoulder, if I take the asset management and take it into the financial piece, we draw a little subsection on that so it doesn't get lost in the. Because the money would have to be spent next year if we were yeah. going to do it next November. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So you got that? I got it. Good. Water shortage. Um, I'll speak on this one very shortly. Um, we're going to do a bit of a debrief as the other proposition I have for the agenda for the IC, which I'm still composing to you, Fred, um, with a view to understanding what we're going to do for next year if it is, in fact, a multi-year drought. Um, just for your information, I approached, and I sent you notes on this, but I'll just quickly remind you that I approached uh, uh, um, CSCD, Community Sport and whatever it is, small dogs, I can't remember, CSCD, um, about funding a study to correlate snowpack to stream flow that would entail modeling you know, the, the, the retention in the, in the sub-layers, uh, crack replenishment, all that good stuff. Um, well, that was the, the other one was the desalination plant. Um, so if we can get that funded, it's an unusual project. They're very interested. Uh, they want me to scope it out, or us to scope it out, meaning the IC to scope it out. Uh, and then they'll talk about special funding on that one, um, et cetera, et cetera. Because it has applicability all over the province. One, once you can correlate the extent of snowpack to resulting stream flow and, and replenishment of groundwater. So th there's that aspect to it. The se second aspect, so the, the, the reason I mention that is we do not now know, as a result of this summer's drought, what our groundwater column looks like. Is it completely empty? Has it filled up again because of the recent rain? Does it fill up in a day? Does it fill up you know, over five years? We just don't know. And so we need to know because it's too risky not to. So we have two aspects to mitigate the risk. First, we're going to get information. Second, we're going to put a desal plant in if we can hack it and decide that's what uh, we need to do to address our long-term strategic requirements for water. So, you're championing that one. Well, the, yes, I, I will champion it through the IC, and the IC will come up with recommendations. And it's a, it's a, a long-term thing. The only other aspect to that that I would ask the IC to look at, just for your information, is to determine if our outdoor water use bylaw served our purposes. I think it obviously worked very well. Had we not had it, we would have run out twice this year. But um, there was a little bit of confusion between the fact that we had three levels, Metro had four. Uh, there was also confusion over the drought level indication, which also has four levels, that is indicated province-wide, so we may want to do a little bit of harmonization around that for next year. Just as well we didn't get those signs printed. Just one of my suspicions about it. So, um, I've got that uh, through the IC. So by, so by 2016 we would have a water shortage plan? By the same time, the same anniversary dates as we had this year for the outdoor water use by it will it will come through in the outdoor water use by law, plus a uh, potential need for um, water contingency budget as we had this year. As you remember, we repurposed sixty thousand dollars, which I know we've spent. We will end up spending just about all of it, will we not? We've only spent about half now. Yeah, but I there was something sure. big pending. Correct. We we were intending to use that potentially if there was a shortfall for the emergency repair work, which it doesn't look like there is. At this time, yes. 
okay, so maybe we don't need 60. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the contingency work's been done anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only nice. other contingency project that we want to consider, and this is going to be another thing over and above the infrastructure master plan, is a raw water feed from Alberta to one of the two treatment plants. Whether that's done by fire hose or you know coffer dam or who knows what. The big challenge there is depending on how well you do it, you might have to rebuild the road first, you might have to put safety rails in there. So that would have to be scoped out before we consider it. But maybe that is a necessary condition. condition. We know a lot more about our water now than we did this time last year, that's for sure. In terms of stream characteristics and so on and so forth. Okay, so that one's in hand. Personnel succession. Some of this we would want to discuss in close because it involves real Can I people. Just put your name on this one. Yeah, um, this is something we will discuss as as a council. Uh, we will be having a report um, from Anne uh, tonight. Tonight, so we'll leave that one for now. But that's on my thing. Twenty-year budget. I would propose just fall straight under asset management. It's the same thing. Yeah, I, and knowing what I know now, I'd be happy to do a three-year budget. I could stand on. Well, you know, I'm I'm fairly. Sure, that we don't really want a five-year plan that just automatically multiplies yeah. the, the, the working year yeah. by X percent. We actually want to see where we stand so we know what's coming up. And I think that will come out of an asset management So plan. I'll take one. Good. Uh, also, of course, out of the OCP, you know, if we anticipate developing and adding residents or losing residents or closing the school or opening a, a university, these things all apply. But um, I think those two are the same thing. So, Ron, that's all in the Thank week. Land use. Um, I'm, I'm suggesting maybe we call it a sustainability plan as opposed to the lump. Well, I think we've got to get or rid of that term yeah. lump. <laughs> <laughs> we don't use the term lump anymore. Yeah. It, it, it's, it can never be a master plan. I mean, you know, other communities have the luxury of having planning departments, um, and these things just come along for the ride. Yeah, I, I don't like the term sustainability, and I don't like uh, the, the, the term. The land uh, use study is what we have. Yeah, Grant McGrady referred to it. It was probably was a misnomer calling it a land use master. Yeah, he said that in his, his document. And he said yeah. it should be yeah, land use right. strategies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, this is you know there's practicalities. Um, so this is uh, in the annual report. If it's to be believed, this is uh, my department. So leave it with me for now. You know, there's nothing there. Council will be faced with all practical changes. So. But Carl, it's in your yeah. piece off the annual report where a bunch of these things all fall right to where you're going to be the lead. It's strategy stuff. Um, you know, nothing's happening for now. So, so we're not going to resurrect it in 2016? Uh, we will it. discuss that in council okay. meeting because it's coming up. Okay. Well, it's coming up now. It's yeah. coming up now. <laughs> and it's coming up next, I think, and then uh, we'll discuss and it. And then the OCP, I don't know. Item yeah, OCP. I think that uh, I, OCP is near and dear to my heart because I feel the current one doesn't really guide us very well. It doesn't guide us. It doesn't guide developers. Doesn't guide future residents. It was. It, it 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 addressed. I'm sorry, but from my impression of the OCP stuff, it addressed wines and ditches. Simple as that. It did address people's complaints, <coughs> and that was about it. It was just a constant back and forth, and we, it wasn't really useful to develop a community on. It was more internal digesting of problems that we have. Yeah, and I'd, I'd excuse that if, if it was our first, but it wasn't our first. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. So we, we do need an update, um, but I think it's going to be governed by budget discussions. Yeah, and I, I would like to see the next OCP have its feet on the ground with a giving us a roadmap of where we w want to go and how we can go there, rather than sort of dreams up in the clouds. It was just something. I don't it know was it was too airy fairy. It was yeah. it was the product of a consultant who barely managed to get his search and replace uh, correct to get Lions Bay in the right places. Is my but we need we needed to go beyond. We need to take it beyond the borders of Lions Bay so that we have a plan for how we're going to grow. We can't just try and revamp the land we got in here. You know, we're gonna we're gonna change rezone that area to this. That that's not gonna work. Like people are just digging their heels in. That's what I've got right now down here. Sure. And it's just it's just not. And people like their communities. They want they want that's to see a it grow. want to change. And the zoning is the way it is because people want it that way. So, so if you have a whole area that can be zoned that off to the corner somewhere, that's great. But or don't put it in somebody's neighborhood. Uh, the Ministry of 
well, Flinro, and then there's some clearinghouse uh, in Victoria that does this. They're very amenable to talking to us about expansion of boundaries. They don't mind. And that's a good way to go. Yeah. yeah. And, and then we have to put a prospectus together. I'm learning this from Anne. And then uh, you invite expressions of interest and then talk about things in a more holistic way. Uh, there's that. I mean, I'm dealing with this at the regional level as well, and it's quite interesting to me. You know, people sit down around a table and they say, we are going to plan a community there with a regional transportation corridor, and poof, it happens. Mm -hmm. Evergreen Line, uh, Canada Line, $5 billion is spent, and, and you know, that's planning. We have the same here, just on a smaller scale. It's just the number of zeros we're talking about. Um, that's being done in a holistic way, and they spend a lot of time on planning. Uh, this is what this is. So. Uh, I would suggest that the OCP is an all-council thing. 2016? Budget decision. It's a budget yeah. decision. Mm -hmm. I would love for there to be an OCP in 2016. We deferred it from this year, if you remember. We did. Um, we haven't seen any numbers yet, but we shall see. So <coughs> this list may be dynamic, but that's what we've got so far. You've taken on too much. <laughs> <laughs> what else do I have to do? Seven up was mine to take away. <coughs> yes, good, thank you. Okay, Board of Variance recommendation. That has not come forward to the October 6th meeting, and um, that relates to human resources. It has not come forward? It, no, it has not. Not okay. at this time. Okay, uh, that, that was deferred from the previous meeting, so this report is a little overdue. So we're looking for a recommendation on the makeup of the Board of Variants. My understanding was that it was just that it came out of the last meeting, didn't it? No, it had come from the previous meeting. Okay. So if we will defer that one. Um, just for expectations, what I'm looking for, and I'd be interested to hear what other people are looking for, is... I mean, we all know who the Board of Variants members are and what the qualifications are. Uh, my own opinion is that we're very lucky to have who we have. Uh, it's more in terms of the ancillary support around the Board of Variants from the building inspector, from the planning component that we don't own, uh, meaning they need to be given guidance as to plans, hence the OCP. Board of Variants members have said to us at the Policy and Bylaw Review Committee, that they are fully cognizant of the fact that the rules allow residences to be constructed <coughs> that are inconsistent with the general neighborhood ethos. There's nothing they can do. The Board of Variants only adjudicates undue hardship. Undue meaning it's not faced by everybody in the same area. So, you know, where the, where the steepness of lot is an undue hardship, everybody has that hardship. You deal with it and build your house. You know, if you've got a big rock in the middle, okay, maybe that's a new hardship. So anyway, it could very well be that the staff recommendation is nothing is done to the Board of Variants. Mm -hmm. Should we reappoint them? But we don't even know when, when they're... Actually, I, I would have been interested in date of appointment, tenure in office, so, and kind of background stuff like that. Yeah, we need and to know that. Then I, so I think just a general background, and then we may have some questions. But I would have some questions. Board of Variants is, a, is, a, is appointed by council. It's not a standing committee or a, or a um, select committee. It's, a, it's its own animal. Uh, members are appointed for three-year terms. That didn't get updated, I guess, when, when they changed the terms of councils to four years, or maybe it's on purpose, I don't know. Some of it falls under local government, Act. some of it falls under the community charter. It's all a bit of a mishmash. In theory, they shouldn't have much to do. So the Board of Variants in Vancouver meets quarterly and almost never considers anything. Why? Because it's all covered by zoning and planning. There's no need to adjudicate hardship because it's all well defined. Our Board of Variants is far more too much to do. So that tells me that our building bylaw needs updating, <coughs> which we've discussed. We already know that. We know that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to be done there. So just a report, exactly as Ron says. Short bios, how long have they been in the thing? Are they planning on staying? Are they happy with staying? Yeah, to me, know? there's issues of succession here, too. I mean, we roughly know the ages of the individuals, so I don't know what if they move. Yeah, do we want to enforce a mandatory retirement after mm -hmm. uh, X term or X age? Start a recommendation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Land use plan recommendation. <coughs> We're going to see that next. Whew. Unfinished business. So, 
The first one is the $10 a day discussion. This was, as I recall, uh, yes. yeah, it was a, a request for an endorsement of the plan. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. May I lead this? Yes. Thank you. Uh, it was a very uh, good demonstration by uh, by the presenter, uh, and certainly if I could just recall, I think the council had a chance, which we didn't prior to coming to that meeting, to look at this. <coughs> it's uh, a very clear what the ask is, uh, which is to support the $10 of child, child care plan through um, lobbying a government through their lobby group. <coughs> and within the four pages of uh, who the list of organizational supporters are. I didn't check any of them, but I'm going to presume that they've all signed a letter that the representative would like us to. Uh, I think the Q&A was brief, and obviously this presenter is, well, I think she was president of their, their, uh, their group. Um, I quizzed them on um, the president of the BC Business Council. How come the Business Council is not endorsing this, which they are not? Uh, she said, uh, <laughs> along the lines that they weren't ready to, or I did quote him, but he's not speaking on behalf of the Business Council, if I may go on, mm -hmm. Charles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would happen to point out that, in my view, the uh, there's a whole lot of municipal municipalities that support this, a bunch of uh, many labor organizations, school districts, educational districts, and all the rest of the health sectors. Uh, and some political support as well by individuals who are MPs, yada, yada, yada kind of thing. Uh, what is dramatically missing from this is the business support, which encompasses that small section of five pages front and back. And I would uh, point out to the, uh, my colleagues that in front of me is the business of Vancouver, which is done by the Board of Trade. And I have here the... Uh, top 60 public companies uh, in operating in BC, and none of them are supporters of this. I also have the... Is that only because they haven't been approached yet, or because they said no? I'm not the one to be representing the group. I'm just representing information to this group. I mean, I do get the point about childcare and all the rest of this. I also happen to have the largest companies owned by women in Vancouver, which is 18, and none of them are also on this. What I do observe is that Coast Capital or Van City is on there. I can't remember which it's either Coast Capital or Van City, whose main slogan is Families First, and they would be the largest company that's on this group. Surrey Board of Trade is on this one too. Uh, I guess in terms of my representation of the public sector largely being completely absent from this, I draw their page four. Uh, this is a made in BC solution. Based on the evidence, it rejects commercial child care as the answer to current child care. Do you have my a recommendation? My synthesis is that uh, this is a, uh, and in the slideshow, the group was proposing to lobby uh, province of BC to, uh, I mean the cost of running this program was whatever it is, so that's, that's uh, expense. They were going to push the government to just allocate the money for it. But the money was going to be spent through childcare facilities, much as it is today. They were just going to look for a government grant to support it, right? Much as the government extended uh, kindergarten um, hours about three years ago. You know, they went from 9 to noon to 9 to 3. They made the funding available. So that was run through school districts, through the school district being able to hire the right kind of teachers. My understanding this was to go to using a home homegrown example, the Lions Bay Preschool Society, a, a non-for-profit, would be given ten dollars a day per kid. child to run before and after school care. I, I'm going to guess that's what the ask is here. From tax dollars, obviously. Yeah. If if it ever came to pass. Which is so the is. synthesis is that we will tax you, and tell the government how to spend. The government will tax us. The government will tax us. We're asking the government to increase taxes, <coughs> presumably they won't take yeah. it from existing taxes, um, and give it to childcare. I could see that as a useful social program in a, in a society that has children, but do we want to endorse it as a council? Sorry. Oh. Well, I, for me, I'm just drawing what's noticeably absent from the 
Business, well, I can see why businesses wouldn't endorse it. We're not a business, are we? <coughs> Well, if I can throw my boot into the argument. Um, You're the only boot in the argument right now. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems that there's an endless parade of people wanting taxpayer money to fund whatever they want to do. And somewhere the bubble could burst, where how much do you want to be taxed? Do you want to be sweetened like you're paying over half your income to, I understand the tax rate is right through the moon. If you want to be a fully social state, we can go that way if that's what you want. But I do have a bit of a problem that um, they want taxpayer money to fund childcare so somebody can go off and make a living. Like for a single parent, I get it, that's fine. But taxpayer money to fund a two income home, I have a problem with that. We have, we have five kids and there was always one of us at home to take care of them. And we, we survived in this wonderful community. We didn't need assistance, we didn't need anything. We, we made it on our own. And I had tradesman wages. I wasn't a, I wasn't a professional person. So it kind of grates on me to ask the government to fund another program that people should be paying for themselves or make or adjust their lifestyle to accommodate it. Now, I'd rather have the funding if there is going to be something not so generic that everybody gets. If where somebody has a real need, have a look at that. But somebody pulling in, you know, two incomes and you're putting in, pulling in 200 grand a year, being funded like this? I don't think so. It is a bit of a shotgun approach, as is, I, I, sorry to tell you this, because your children are all over 18 now, um, but we get $60 per child per month. Oh yeah. Didn't even ask for it. That's on top of it. You did. For yeah. one, more, one more month? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, uh, yes, your point's well taken, although if I remember from the presentation correctly, she said the net, the net impact on, on the economy, the provincial economy, would be positive because people would be paying more income tax, assuming jobs were there for the taking. All we have to decide is, does Lions Bay Council wish to endorse the... Supporting letter, which... The supporting letter, yeah. yeah. Which, uh, let me just borrow yeah, this down if, if the supporting letter is in here somewhere, right? Actually, I don't think I saw it. I mean, this is their, their bump here. Yeah, I think it was, in the doc it was in this document, I think, they were looking for. Well, we're not going to find it now. So I'm, I'm getting a sense around the table what? Because we can just elect to do nothing. All, right, all, all our neighbors have endorsed it. Uh, yeah, I, didn't you know, see, it's, I didn't see Vancouver in there. City of Vancouver? Or, uh, you know, it's easier for governments to do that because it doesn't cost us anything. The first thing, you know. But then it becomes meaningless too. But it's the West Vancouver. If we... It's taking a political position. If, which if, this if we, if we endear well. ourselves as a community that wants to invite young families, we need to think about supporting, even though we, we may not, we're all you know, past that point. We may want to try supporting that just to say that we do support it. Uh, just, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just... Well, Mr. Mulcair on. actually was on the TV the other day saying he was going to give $15 per child. Should we be endorsing him too? Mm -hmm. There's a number, and, and they all have this, they've all jumped on. So every one of the parties except the Conservatives have, have this program in mind, and now they're just they're deciding on the number. Yeah. In, well, just let's get a sense around the table. I'm hearing no for you, Fred. No, for councils endorsing it, whether you like the plan or not. Um, well, Nick, do we have poodle jumping next? I mean, what do we what do we endorse? I mean, what, I, I don't see the value in it. In the endorsement? Yeah. And giving away our endorsement. You know, we, we have endorsed some fairly, let's call them social focused programs, uh, largely to do with the environment, to do with... Um, Grand Fondo, things like that. Yeah. <coughs> Um, yeah, Grand Fondo's got a real good benefit. It really encourages... Well, it doesn't cost activity. the government anything. You know, no. It's not your tax dollars. We've done private things. We've done environmental things. Um, yeah, we want to kill LNG, which is going to bring $17 billion a year yeah. into the province. Uh, we did That's endorse costly. the uh, transit tax, which is a taxation if you can, just using that. We exactly. did endorse that? We did not. We did we not. Did not. Okay, so, fine. What do you say, Jim? I could go either way, I suppose. I, I, think, it's a, I, I think it's a reasonable thing. Helen? 
Well, I would say yes because it's dear to my heart and I know that our community struggles with finding whether it's physically physically finding daycare or paying for daycare, so I would I would certainly say yes. Uh -huh. I think the cause is good, but I believe it opens the door and I would be opposed. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, my, my reasons would be the same as Helen's. I, I think, and, and just to a certain extent, I think it's strategic for the community if we, to the extent that anybody would check what we said or not, that we endorsed a, a plan that would allow for childcare. Child so I'd be for endorsement. So do we bring this to council for endorsement? Yes, Can, is it on the agenda for this, uh, this evening? I don't believe it it's is, not? but okay, we could so amend the agenda if you wished. Okay, so we've been re the request has been made of council. We I think it behooves us to respond, yes or no. So we'll bring it, uh, consider it over the course of the next uh, two weeks, and then. That's an interesting one. Two for, two against, and one fifty fifty. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that means you have to word it carefully so that. Yes. <laughs> no, no, it's. It, I think. I, I council think votes not to endorse. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Hughes has to get yeah, off the fence. Yeah, right. yeah. I was waiting for you to weigh in, but I realize you're not in the council. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, land use plan report, page nine. You've seen the report many times, I know. I'm sure it's been uh, talked about and thumped uh, in front of you many times. This was a report provided to us by uh, well qualified consultants. And the recommendation uh, coming to the uh, strategy committee, not committee of the whole, but uh, be that as it may, is not quite the same wording, Anne, as, as the, the, the two CAOs ago, which was to receive the report. This is correct. Rather that, than to approve the report. And that is likely related to my level of um, overview of, of all the documentation prior to writing this cover report. Yeah, so I'm, you know, we're not going to go through the plan. That's not the issue right now. The issue is uh, the prior council left it to this council to do something with. I would suggest that this council receives the report and puts it into the hopper, and it's part of the, the deal. That's the only thing I could think of when I read it, read through it, because I, I don't don't necessarily agree with it, but we can accept it as it is. I don't agree with it at all. Yeah. I, yeah, think so it, I think I think it's that, only a third yeah, of the way there. Yeah. There's some good stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't need to be in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I agree. I, I agree. We should um, just re receive it. I don't want to approve it as if we endorse it because of the, the, men the words yeah. you're mentioning. That's right. But I, I think we should uh, put somewhere in our decision or our putting this in the hopper, as you call it, to emphasize that it's going as a research document to the OCP as a document for strategies, but it's not a master plan. It's not, it's not a finished master plan. It's just land use strategies. And it's uh, just a document that can be used piecemeal apart so they like it, if they don't like it, and then the community decide how much of it they want to use and lay the rest of it aside. It's a snapshot that was taken at that point in time. And it was, it was somewhat incomplete, and the process ended up being hijacked and, and hence became flawed. Um, these guys have obviously done these processes before. Yeah, to the extent, I think, Fred, you may be right, I would even go so far as to say we should not bring it to the council meeting coming this evening, but to actually massage the wording to reflect exactly, because it is a potentially quite a fraught situation, to say exactly things like that. It's going to inform the OCP process, uh, it's a guideline, all this stuff, so that the recommendation, the resolution that is adopted reflects all of those things and doesn't give any sense that, that we're off to the races. Mm -hmm. This document came up three times in the conversation two weeks ago when I got, you know, dragged into that conversation down. On Positively or negatively? Uh, negatively, mm -hmm. yeah. Ne positive for what they were wanting, but negative for what, what, what I think it should have gone. In other words, it was being used as a tool against something. And I don't know that everybody agrees with that, but then again, they had, you know, there's five residents there I was talking to, and they were quite adamant about it. You know, so. Well, a lot of people read into these things, as is always the case. Um, well, they planning feel threatened. threatened. They see surveyors walking up and down their street, yeah. and they feel yeah. threatened about their property values are all going down. And it, that was it. I would emphasize the documents received with no further work to be done. Yeah. And the issue here is that you can keep going backwards to review the thing. Uh, in residents, to Jim's point, can go back and say, well, what about this, what about this, what about this? That is not our aim to review all of that. 
So it's, by no just, means. We were just accepting it as is. It can be used as a tool to develop other things. It can be used for, for the information that's in there. For, for you know, there's, There is some value in it, and we can accept it at that. Okay. So I think to your point, the wording is quite key. Yeah. So do we want to tweak the wording to reflect exactly what it is that we're doing? So I would say that the council receives the 2014 Village of Lions Bay Land Use Master Plan pre uh, prepared by Jerry Bars and Associates uh, as one element of future land use planning uncapitalized. Something like that. Or, that, that would be or maybe instead of a land use planning, or land use strategies. Land use strategy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and official community plan development. But don't yeah. call it a master plan. Yeah. Um, I, we, when we, I'd be fine with that one percent. So, do we want to try and squeeze it in for tonight, or do we want to just? That's council's decision. There's, there's no real imperative. Let's just, let's table this recommendation. Let's table the right thing. Well, yes, we'll, table. Well, so we'll, we'll just, we'll just to next meeting. We'll just, yeah, next meeting. The well, October. Have, have we got room tonight for it? That's the only thing. Well, I don't think you were planning to bring this, right? No. No. So no. let's let's the think through you, the wording. The more if you, you have push any off. The more you push off, so it has to come up another time. We're, we're not slowing well, down. It's going to be a 30 second deal at the next Yeah, we're not going right. to do anything about it this year or no, 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 probably next year. We're just going to accept it. So why don't we just accept it, word it, and get it on with tonight? Get it over. Okay. It's more a formality. But yeah. on the other hand, I don't want to put the window no. on people. No. Okay. So, so I'm, I hear you. Do you want it tonight? No, no. We're no, going to defer. Sorry, I you said. Oh, okay. No, and we're going to defer no. until we get the wording exactly right. And you would like a recommendation to yeah. receive the report. Yeah. yeah, plus a little bit extra. So let's you and me work, work on the, the wording. Okay. 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 <laughs> Council priority list, page six. Okay. Okay. Carl and Helen, I'm fine with this uh, verbatim except for the dead sun is sustainable. For me. I know, actually, Kate, okay, that was that was the one that we were questioning. So I've, I've kind of reworded re it based on some research I've done with regards to sustainability and the pillars of sustainability. I don't know, there's four or five two, two, or three. Two pillars too. Really? I thought it was, I don't know. My, we wordsmithed ourselves very well on this one. I, I, I concur with this. I don't know, but okay, so actually it's good. If well, we, uh, you hit the three points that I was opposed to. It's, I mean, on the budget piece, I mean, I, I, I won't be jocular but say, to say we're in a survival mode, but it's tight. So, I mean, you know, the sustainability is a key deal. The, on the original one, there was environmental, but there's op operational issues that are covered. And then the remake document, you've done all three. Because they say that for a community to be su sustainable, you need the three pillars. What was it? What did you say? The three legs? bottom line. Three legs of still. Yeah, yeah I need three three legs of sustainability. Yeah. yeah. What are they? Finance, infrastructure, and what? what? Well, environmental, environment. economic, and social. But seeing as you ask, I would look at this, and I would say that if I was looking at this, trying to turn it into the sustainability model, I'd say effective communication and value volunteer is probably part of the same. Probably. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But I, so uh, yeah. I have a bit of a problem with this because the, the things that we endorse, the yeah. priorities, are not these. They, I'll they, just, they that's right. I remind you they were community engagement, yeah. for the, the top one, high livability, okay, that's the same yeah, that's title, there, yeah. financial and infrastructural sustainability, not overall, just financial and infrastructural, valuing volunteers and good governance. Yeah. So we change the sustainable to, can we keep the wording though? Well, what we endorsed was talking to financial and infrastructural. It was nuts and bolts, hard money and concrete, mm -hmm. not the rest of it. Okay. This so sounds like a high-level vision statement. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a far higher but that, level. Well, it is a high-level vision statement, yeah. And how we were going to deliver that one, the financial and infrastructural uh, sustainability, present an understandable, usable, transparent, community-driven 2015 budget and commence planning the 2016 budget to a timeline set by council in June. Okay, so we've missed that one already. Fund and deliver the infrastructure master plan. Done. Prepare shovel-ready RFPs to be ready for the next round of grant funding. Review land use strategies, zoning change, and a new building bylaw. You know, four things. This is, this is great, no argument, but it's not what we said we would do. So infrastructure, how do I, okay. How do you say it quickly? Yeah. Well, I, you know, we've, we've tweaked these words round and round the houses, and how we eventually came up with it before was financial and infrastructural sustainability. 
I don't like the word sustainable because it's a meaningless word. Um, well, to that point, I think any language we use should be easily understood by somebody who has nothing to do with government. Doesn't have buzzwords. Yeah, because there's too many buzzwords. Like, even down here, and sorry, Alan, I don't mean to pick on you, but everybody's talking whenever they come here about transparency. Like, what, what on earth does that mean? Like, if we go into a closed meeting, how are we transparent? I mean, well, we have the opportunity. I actually like the word transparent because I think in public company reporting, everything should be transparent. And so it's a, it's a good piece. I think transparent is a, is a piece that belongs in there. I agree with that. That's it's, a, it's a government buzzword. I, I prefer yeah. the word open, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's fine because this is not... I is meshing the two pieces here, isn't it? Well, this is not how we're going to do it. That's, that's in this one, deliverables. This one embroiders on what we actually meant by those headlines. But I don't think what we meant by sustainable infrastructure and finance is what is said okay. there in number three. Sustainable community. Okay. So... I think it's a good place to start. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've been going, we've yeah. going around yeah, and right. around. No, I know, but I'm just saying. Well, the one that I was given to review we're not, we're was... Sure was the I didn't like it all, but I see yeah. you changed it now, so that's good. And the value volunteers, um, not volunteer, is... Uh, the value that we said here was acknowledge as a core value that volunteers are integral to the community. How many you change that? It's been changed so many times. I don't even. I don't know well, this is the one that we endorsed, the, that we agreed on. But then, what are you reading? Or the the, the council of priorities document. So we're just going to take. It's published in the uh, this, annual report. This sentence underneath and put it. Well, it's up to you. Uh, maybe we can embroider it more, but yeah. is, this is the one that was published in the annual report. This is what people want to know. They want to know, what do these things actually mean? Well, here's what they mean. This one is not right. I, I can okay. live with this one. Okay. Although, two different a wording is, now the people are going to say, well, which one is it? To the extent that anybody's following this stuff. I think we need one more out. I think the two of you should agree on what the rest of us want to say. <laughs> and because uh, I, I like I like the presentation of this versus the absolutely. Well, I think, I think like the layout one. Is good. And this, I agree this one's with that. this one has to go. This is e-post material the way it's printed like this. this. Is and you wanted to mount this on the thing here, right? Yeah, big yeah. poster mounted everywhere. It needs to clearly reflect yeah. what was put out already. Okay. Well, it's a lot better than it was because my my yeah, hair stood up on end when I saw the previous great. version. I think the two of you have got your march marks. Okay, fine. We'll do that. Okay, we'll bring that to the next council strategy. Mm -hmm. um, while we're at it, council strategy meeting. Do we really want one every two weeks? We Why don't, don't we just do we it the first Tuesday? We don't always have one. No, we don't. We're trying to cancel, cancel the second council meeting. We're even trying to cancel. But I, I mean, I. I would love to, but there's too much to do. And well, I would say that if we're going to have council strategy meetings, we should be having council strategy meetings in the evening when we can have public. Okay, well, we just discussed input. that and suggest we start the council strategy meeting at 6. So it's an hour, and we go stop well, at, at 7. at least we've got a chance to have resident input at that point in time. And apparently we don't have to change the procedures bylaw for that one because there's no time stipulated for the, the strategy meeting. Yeah. Well, That's my biggest concern with these meetings uh, is just that mm -hmm. it's not... There's no chance for public, not much chance for public input. Yeah. People that are working. Yeah, these ones tend to cause you to get a speeding ticket I found last week or last month. Did you? Nope. Close? Well, my you should have. Goes under the I could have got one this morning, but I was on the phone on the way out of the village. No, I'm not. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm driving on hands free. I'm not, I'm not doing anything. The phone rang. Yeah, no. And, um, and I just said to the guy, I said, look at that, there's a policeman hiding in the bushes. <laughs> well, <laughs> he has a bright orange jacket. <laughs> they're all hiding at Kelvin Grove now, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, so yeah. Over the that's, a, that's a comfortable yeah. spot because they can actually lean, well, lean against it. All you see is his yellow shoulder yeah. and, this, and this little two pair of binoculars looking at you. And you see the red thing, that's, you're too late. <laughs> Nothing illegal. I, uh, well, okay. I'd like them to be pointing the other way, a motorbikes on a Saturday. But uh, that's a whole Okay, so this is with us. Will this be exact thing. No, Colin. Are you going to revise it? We're going to revise it. Okay. But it's going to come to strategy committee first. Okay. I'm not going to go to council. So back to this on the, just to stop for a second. I mean, I actually can't think of what we've got for the second potential session for October. It's burning holes in what we've seen here. Yeah. I, I would suggest we, we, the next council strategy meeting is the first Tuesday in November. I would suggest we eat our cooking and do exactly the same thing. What does that mean? 
we it's doing what we said we'd do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Give us a break. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about council meeting deferring. Anyway. Do you really want to bring it up tonight? Yeah, just bring it up. The important, the important thing with council meetings is that if there's a need for a council meeting, we can always have a council meeting. But my thought is have a council meeting, it's regular scheduled council meetings. If something comes up, you need to have a council meeting. It's doable. Yeah, my concern is if it's not, if it's regularly, if it's the expectation, if it's a month, is a long time not to discuss things that are important. It means you have eight or uh, nine a year. Do a special council meeting at six or seven at night. Yeah, that's usually for a one-off. Though. What's are we not allowed to have? Are we not allowed to have discussions on email? No. No, not no. in theory. No. Although no. we will ask for dispensation on that because the reason is. In big municipalities, where all the work is done by staff, that's fine. Council comes to ratify staff's recommendations. Mm -hmm. We don't have the planning staff. The well, committees are doing all sorts of stuff here, mm -hmm. too. Yes, in theory, we should come. This, a lot of this discussion should be done in committee. Well, this is a committee. So, you know, we are going to bring recommendations based on this discussion to the council meeting for ratification. It should be boom, boom, boom. Um, I know, I fully understand that you don't want to go along the spectrum of decision making by email. Um, I agree with that. I'm not, that I'm works not, great in Vancouver. But, but discussions, I'm not talking about, about opinion, making opinions on what we're going to do, but at least keep everybody abreast of what the issues are. It's a difficult one. You know? Well, I don't know. The ruling, it's not in the community to charge it, but, but the legal opinions are that if you're moving along the spectrum of decision, it's got to be done in public. It's a no, no. Because once you yeah. voice no. any kind of opinion, you don't want to opinion. go foible on that one. That's just bad, 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 bad. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any contention in any of the discussions we're having no. today, but there will be. Um, yeah, the idea is to have it in the open. Look, we even said transparent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think the par parliamentarians that had uh, consulted with us in our last term, uh, I think it was unanimous that uh, the discussions leading up to the decision must be available to the public as well, and I think that's why the emails were next. It does mean that there's no ability to do anything because we cannot have the level of detailed discussion that I sent out by the budget preparation yeah. email. You can't have that level of discussion in no. detail at a council meeting. Which, which Saturday should we take for that? So that just doesn't ever happen yeah. in a small municipality. In a big municipality, fine, you've got staff doing all that. You've got a massive budget staff. There is, I mean, I see this happen at Metro. They've got fantastic cadre of staff. Um, Plenty of time, well supported, uh, the, the PowerPoints come out on time, the, all the binders have these things done. Um, the, the, the elected officials just say yes, because it's an obvious decision, and they give us all the alternatives. We don't have that luxury in this form municipality. We, just, we have to provide input. I, I know. Maybe we budget more people. Well, budget more taxes. <laughs> Well, you saw what I showed you about uh, taxes. Yes. Okay, so that that's a more philosophical so discussion. So you're going to bring this up tonight as a as, as the meeting item, schedule agenda item schedule. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, my ask would be yeah, we'll, we'll just add it. Don't worry about changing. So my agenda. ask would be in the interim of staff looks at what they think is in the hopper that we might be able to skip one. Here. You're talking about council meeting as well. Council meeting. The second. In fact, the second October meeting. Yeah. Well, I would have to look at the list. Yeah, look, I, I, I just off the top of my head, I can't tell you what's. I would probably know better after our the council meeting tonight, right? Well, possibly, yeah. You don't you don't know of any upcoming subdivision applications that have come over the. Subdivisions do not come to council. As far as development applications, I don't know of any. No. Council doesn't uh, vote on a subdivision application? Yeah. Those go to uh, the approving officer, and the approving officer is outside of council for a reason, to stop councils from making really bad decisions sometimes. Mm. But council makes a decision on zoning bylaw. Correct. Yes. Absolutely. But that's that's the more serious that's, decision. Yeah. Yes, that's a, the, the overarching, bigger picture that guides all of that decision making. Okay. Okay, well, that's good to know because, as you know, we had a deputation the other day. Well, no, you don't know. Uh, it was just before your time. We didn't quite know what they were asking. They sort of 
they were ambiguous in the They answer. handed out a sheaf of papers, some, some plans, some... Well, I they don't really know what they're asking. I think that's probably why Jim got ambushed here, too. Well, they, they, what, what happened is that the residents felt that they, they almost walked out of here thinking that the council had blessed them, and I said, no, that didn't happen. The council, it, there's a process here that has to be walking no. on that street. I know, yeah. And in fact, we were, I, I was worried, we were a little rude, saying, bring yeah, someone no, to I make know, a decision. I know. So I, I, I sat through the whole thing and thought, well, it went pretty well. And then the residents that are affected by it were just like, you know. But the residents are affected by it, especially in the Isle of case, unless they know more than we do. Well, what's being talked about? There was other issues at the time, okay. too. They were in well, exactly. the tree war as well. There was other things going on. We were amongst the same neighbors, so, yeah. Hey, we can only form opinions on what we presented. I sat down, I listened, I talked, and I tried to okay. you know, keep it. Lucky so, this is committee. We're not deciding so, the problem. And if you want to look at what's going on, but if we can give you a moment, that'd be great, because the committee stuff is going to keep going. Yeah. Okay, we've got six minutes if we're going to hit deadline, so let's move on to seven new business grant application opportunities, page 6-5. Yeah, that was me. I, I just put this in because of our discussion at our last council meeting with regards to the gaming grant that whether our fire department is eligible or not, and no one seemed to know. So I'm, then I thought, oh, are there other grants that we don't, you know, we're not applying for that we should know? Sort of like the one that Fred just, you know, the asset management grant. So is someone, you know, I don't know, is there, because I, I think you mentioned when you were, in the election process that we might hire a grant um, consultant or something like that. I did say that was one of my election things, uh, that I wanted to be absolutely sure we weren't letting any grant yeah. opportunities go by the wayside by employing a consultant. Not a grant writer, just something to tell us. Or oh, presumably they would also do some grant writing. So, now, it, it raises a valid point. So Fred's telling us about this, this uh, asset management plan grant which is not quite the same as infrastructure planning grant that you thought it was. And I'm not saying that there's one way or the other. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of grant opportunities out there. Every time you talk to um, provincial people, they say, oh, there's a grant for that, um, which nobody seems to know about. Is there a clearinghouse? So, Your Worship, if I could talk to that. Yes, we are aware. We get the information on all the grants as well. But how come we didn't know about the one that Fred knew about? Oh, have, have you budgeted for it? Then what's the point? Have you allocated human resources to it? Your management staff is currently working is 41% short. If your budget were 41% short, you would probably be considering cutting things rather than adding to them. So these are all re factors that impact our ability to um, have, have we done a lot of the groundwork. Most grants require some form of of supporting documentation like a feasibility study or I think the issue is more if we knew the grant was available it might, might color what we consider doing and the timing is important too because using Fred's one as an example um, for, for, the, for the asset management one where you know we if we didn't have the budget now we'd table it for a year from now mm -hmm. or nine months so that we'd hit the deadline I mean then Assuming it still can, because that, that's well, the presuming it does. Sometimes but I mean, these it, things change. I, I guess if I can ask your question again, Carl, and no disrespect to staff intended here, but uh, in in your professional background, is there such a uh, Carl used the term clearinghouse? Are there consultants that do this kind of thing? I'm not quite sure what you're looking for, so I would need to. Well, we even need to be presented with all of our opportunities and make a decision on whether we actually. Hey, great! They'll pay half of our um, asset management plan. Let's think about an asset management. Whereas we would never contemplate it otherwise. Uh, you know, maybe there's a playground replacement grant that, well, if we knew about it, we would consider even putting the, in the, game, the gaming thing for the fire department and stuff like that. I mean, which is kind of new, and uh, you know, it's well, it's not. It's actually not new, but. We, so, for example, under the gaming grant, I see that um, uh, Watch Lake North Green Lake Volunteer Fire Department, they've applied for it. So, I'm just wondering, what, okay, so the fire department, it's an ongoing thing, it's it's not new. So, have fire we applied? Fire department is challenging because municipalities do not yeah. qualify for the gaming grant, and our fire department is part of the municipality. 
So I don't think they would qualify. Okay, so Some um, fire departments we'll, are okay. you nonprofit know, yeah. societies. Uh, okay, then, but, but, so we'll deal with I that. I think the, kind of the key with the grants is, um, you know, no matter what avenue we take, is it goes hand in hand with the um, budget process because no grant is ever 100 percent. And sometimes you can get into trouble with grants, you apply for a grant, and then you don't have it in the budget, the portion you have to pay, fully understanding how much it's going to cost. An example is the seniors grant. I mean, it was a great grant, but it's going to cost us more than um, the grant actually was, because we have to now have an ongoing seniors program for five years, which may be a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's very, very popular, but sometimes if you apply for grants too quickly, um, you know, not to put the brakes on it, but it, it's it's all it's not something in isolation. You just get someone who tells you who the grants are. I think it's something we can improve on, but to me, it's an integral part of the budget process. We identify projects and we look to see if there's grant funds available, but we can't get the grant unless we've approved it in our so budget. It, it, it becomes a bit of one. So I think that's why you need to be aware of the grants when you do the budget. We're now aware of this infrastructure grant for. But there are so how are management. how are we aware of the grants? Um, you can be aware through Civic Info, a lot of the grants are on that, and just education, it's, learning where the grants are. Yeah, it, it is part of staff's work to, to do some of this. And I suppose I wanted to start off with the, with the worst news first, so that I could get that over with. The, the good news is there is money available, and we increase our chances of eligibility if we plan a little more thoughtfully and a little bit over a longer time frame. And that's why so many of these grants are one it, where it helps us that they are recurring. Um, so we definitely can work around this, but to to try to quickly jump on grants no, at the last minute, no. it, again, we're, yeah. we're going to fall in that two thirds that are unsuccessful. But do we, do we know that we don't we can't get gaming grants, is that what you're saying? Under the current the, legal status of the, the fire department, yes, but I have heard, I can't remember where I heard it now, yeah. that we've talked about changing the status of the fire department to make it eligible for grants. Did I hear it from you? No, Maybe I don't think so. I don't recall. Oh, was it from I you? Mean, yeah. I mean, I see, yeah. yes. I you, see societies here, and I see, I see uh, fire departments in here as listed for volu as fire, volunteer fire <laughs> Society or whatever the case is. So I mean, if that's all, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. If it's worth it, depends. Yeah. Now I know I've applied for gaming grants when I was the treasurer for five years of the play school, um, and it was significant. It was yeah. sixty thousand dollars. Huge. Uh, you know, yeah. it's big grants. So you you want them? It would probably behoove us to find out. You know, is is this six hundred thousand dollars? In which case, it's probably worth considering. Uh, Carl, why don't we, if it's fine with everybody else and you concur and there's nods, why don't we take the grant as part of the revenue piece for the overall budget and uh, just off the top I'm thinking, uh, why don't I make some form of a report quarterly, something like yeah, that. I so we, that would be, I would know in advance whatever projects we were going to do probably so we could start ciphering through that a little bit. Uh, <coughs> Part of the thing is just kind of mindlessly combing and hoping to find gold, but... But I think Anne's point is the right one. You pretty much need the project first rather than the availability of the grant, except in the case of a gaming grant, well, which is not a matching funds grant. That's, that's an outright different, 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 different deal, different. and I think we should get off this topic. Um, so what is an unconditional grant? It's unconditional. No, uh, you no have to spend it on the society that you, that applied for it, but there's no matching Because the there's a few of those, I don't know, like a traffic fine revenue sharing transfer, like... Do, I'm just going to do... Well, we know about that. That one we know about. Yeah, so. not oh, yeah, we're not eligible. Yeah. Because West Vancouver yeah. gets that one. Regional dis oh, no. okay. So my offer, Carl, is that... Small community this grant part is an example. I'll work with staff, and if we come up, then maybe we're not combing right, and let's say Fred, using him as the example, finds this, then great. But yeah, I think that's it, right. It's part of the it budget process. Uh, so to answer your question about the fire department especially, I think we need to do some research to understand what sort of level of, if these guys are applying for and getting $40,000, you know, maybe it behooves us to think about the change of status for the fire department. Well, uh, last decade when I was there, we, uh, we researched the possibility of becoming a, a society as well, and we found that, as we understood then, you could also have a society status along with the fire department, provided you could separate the funds. Like you would have your operational funds, and then you'd have the society status for the, the things you always wished you could afford but couldn't, and then we could apply for the grants. Um, but unfortunately, we were prevented by the council at that time to go ahead with it. Why? They were going to 
the mayor at the time wanted to have his um, society status for the, for the village overall and was wanting to bring the fire department in under it, but it never got off the ground. And, so we I, I don't see how municipalities uh, can ever become a society. Uh, I mean, that's in the charter. Uh, I, on this one, I'm specific to the fire department. If if you council have faith, just let me take this away for mm. a little yeah, that's bit. Good. I think there's research has to be done on that. Well, I, I think there's yeah. there needs to be a yeah. uh, a bit of research that needs to be done. There's going to be some in camera piece to this too, because there's more than just gaming involved here. And right off the bat, as a society piece, uh, if you were to not, whatever get them their papers, not incorporate them, whatever it is, what's the year end? They have to have separate accounting. So, I mean, the lead time for this is not going to happen now. No. So, council needs to say yes. This is the direction we want to go in the big picture. Because let's use our current year end as an example. Then we legitimately would open separate accounts for the fire department. They'd run under whatever. I mean, we'd be guided by staff and all this, but they'd be running their own books. I don't want to get into this any more than I have. It's a big thing. Um, just let me ask Have you had speak, any, any experience with this before? Having a, running a dual stream fire department? Seen it? I do see some that have a society status, but I have no ex personal experience. We would be benchmarking and looking at best practices in other municipalities. That's that's what we do. And I do know it uh, entails a lot more work. All of a sudden, but if it's if it's at the benefit of getting a pick a number sixty thousand dollar grant, yeah, maybe it, this this wouldn't be a project that would be complete in the next month or two, but no. it would definitely be worth exploring. And My question is: It just related to Fire departments? No, there's many. I mean, could we have a I, ambulance? Yeah, does yeah, ambulance, well. same thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm just and don't laugh. But I'm saying, do we? Do, is there a society somewhere that maintain does parks or stuff like that that maintains parks and stuff like that? I can't remember the criteria anymore. I mean, I, you know, I went through this every year, and you have to file a return and say what you did with it. I don't like the term gambling grant or gaming grant because it makes you think there has to be some entertainment component. It's yeah. not. No. It's the tax yeah. that comes off yeah. the BC lottery. For example, Arts Council could probably apply for it if they had the. Sure, they could. Well, that's their, they should. Yeah, they should. Uh, they should they find should. out, and they should. Yeah. But maybe they do, for all I know. Um, but the fire department is sort of a quasi municipal organization that, that we're responsible for. So, you know, that's, that's a slightly different animal. Yeah, okay, good. Well, you sh it's good that you brought this up, Helen, because if we're leaving money on the table there, specifically on the fire department, for the rest, I'd be comfortable saying that we probably the process is such that we find out about the grants. How? By. That's a revenue piece. That's I'll what you're Well, we'll do it. Through stuff, essentially. Well, it seems to me you guys have been doing a lot of heavy lifting for the last seven months, so I don't mind doing that. Part. <coughs> Yeah, I don't want to be a, give you a flippant answer. How do we know that we've got it? We don't. There's, there's no. logically no way of knowing that we've got all the answers. Why do it? Until we, until we get an exhaustive list, we don't know well, we don't what the criteria are. I mean, you're right. Just, let's figure out what it is. And then there's got to be a listing somewhere. Of, well, there's yeah. so many. There's, guys there's a there. number there's of so organizations so that keep well, databases yeah, no, of yeah, prints. Yeah, some yeah. are better, some are worse. They typically nice are restricted to staff. It would be... Probably unusual for them to give you access. It's not public. Yeah. Secret grants. No, they're not Ooh, secret. I like grants. it. The the, da <laughs> the database. <laughs> the, the the organizations that maintain secret the database grants. are typically organizations that support local government. Secret grants to so pay for liquor on your expense account. <laughs> okay, fine. Let's leave it there. Thank you, Helen. Yeah. Well played. Um, so that's the end of the agenda. Um, so I'll ask for a motion for adjournment. Oh no, sorry, uh, uh, I've got ahead of myself. Public questions and comments? Now I can ask for adjournment. And all in favour? Motion and meeting adjourned. How feasible is it?